How are you today? We're um, got a bit of an early start this morning. We were wet ready, 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 um, almost an hour and a half ago to do this. I, on the other hand, apparently am not ready. So <laughs> he had cameras and everything set up, computers all running, everything is tickety boo, and me. What do I do at one minute to one? Suddenly decide that I have to use the ladies' room. So it was a quick one. <laughs> you good? I'm good. Yeah, right. <laughs> good. So I got a cup of tea. Um, we just had another storm here on the East Coast. I'm going to smash this thing one of these days. We had another storm here on the East Coast. Uh, so parts of Nova Scotia, my pal uh, Sheila Landry, um, they got all the pretty snow and the heavy rain and all of that good stuff. We got the misery. We got all the heavy rain. And so there's branches down and trees down and um, it's just a mess. And then the temperature dropped. So uh, the only good thing was is that the uh, the rain stopped long enough. So most of it drained off. So we don't have ice all over the place. But typical of a winter in the Maritimes. It changes from day to day, from week to week. We never know what we're going to get. So, um, but today, a little bit sunny, nice day, cold though, holy smokes. Yeah, brisk. Yeah, if we were plus 10 on Friday. <laughs> Actually, I hit a high of plus 13. Plus 13 in February. Yeah. Wow. Weird. Crazy. Insane weather. Um, we do have a shout out for this week. Yes. Yes, one of my, one of my favorite people. She is just a wonder. She's super talented. Uh, does great work. She's an awesome teacher. She's fun to be around. And uh, I've had the opportunity to work with her teaching uh, Zoom classes and workshops. Um, I've seen her at a variety of shows, seen her in action at shows. Uh, she's terrific. Her name is Lana Lamb. She's a super nice lady. And uh, she has a great YouTube channel. So if you want to just type in Lana Lamb, in the YouTube search bar and go and check out her YouTube channel and uh, by definitely go and check out her website at lanalam.com. You're going to love what you find there. She's really talented, some really clever designs and uh, just a one all around wonderful lady. So Lana, I don't know if you're watching. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. Doesn't really matter, but uh, just a shout out to you guys. If you're looking for really great designs, go and check out Lana Lamb's website. You're going to love it. So that's my shout out for today. Lot of land at yeah. lotoland.com. Yep. Yeah. And uh, everybody is off to Vegas this week. Except you. Except me. No, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'll do Vegas next year, maybe. Um yeah, everybody's off. I uh creative painting in Las Vegas starts this week. Uh actually I think it starts today. I know Kathy Hansen is on her way there. Um I can't wait to see what she's doing up there. I know she's got some great classes she's been prepping all week. So, what's the pain to look for? Winnipeg hit minus 39 the other day. Burr. A burr. No. <laughs> no. I'm surprised. Linda Giesbrick, is she in today? Uh, I don't see Linda Giesbrick. It, that was Karen Wilson. Oh, was it Karen? Yeah, it was uh, a wee bit burr in really? Manitoba. <laughs> what? Uh, just... Did we lose something? No, it's Norton Antivirus saying, oh, you should restart your computer. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Not right now. I'm going to okay. delete Norton. Okay, you do that. No, I don't want anything to inter interfere or interrupt today's lesson. We're going to play in mixed media today. So we wanted to do something fun and something relaxed and something easy. And this one is definitely most definitely that you don't it's need it's definitely different it's definitely different <laughs> that's been the response what are we painting today carrots, carrots. <laughs> yeah he was a little really when i told him we were painting carrots happy easter carrots <laughs> um it's I... an orange triangle <laughs> it's an orange triangle <laughs> <laughs> i think it's a fun one um tattooed carrots tattooed carrots that's what he's been calling them <laughs> um it's a fun one they are not difficult to do this i would categorize this definitely as a very beginner piece it's easy to do fun you can make little wobbles and bobbles and it doesn't really matter this one is just relaxing and creative and you can have a lot of fun with it um i've used a variety of stencils in this you don't have to you can use gift wrap if you wanted to um 
take if you've got some fun colored papers or um, tissue paper or dictionary pages or just scraps scrap scrap scrapbook paper wow try that one that's almost as hard as bunny leaves <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is a really uh, uh it's a nice mishmash of things they're stamping they're stenciling there's uh some paint um the instructions have both fluid acrylics you can use fluid acrylic in this i use them for the background mainly but you can use the americanas for the background you don't have to use the fluid acrylics to do this um you're just going to change up the order that you do certain things if you're using um Americana for this background. So this one is super easy, super fun, and you don't need to have a ton of supplies. They don't have to be exactly the same stencils or stamps that I've used. Just use what you have on hand. That's the best thing about this. So if you guys are, what? Well, you have that look on your face. I had, you say had. Had a question? No, it wasn't really a question. Uh, it was Kathy Woodley. Hi, Kathy. She is so excited for this class. <laughs> it's her first live. Oh, wow. Um, obviously a new new subscriber. Yep. She's been been watching you for a week. Oh. <laughs> Do we have that many videos up on YouTube I, already? Or? Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, yes, I think so. Um, welcome, Kathy. We, we do have a lot of fun doing this. Uh, we actually, I think Kathy is also one of our new members. Is she? I believe so. Oh. Well, so, welcome, 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 welcome. Yep. So um, I was just going through the membership list yesterday and uh, I saw saw a name I wasn't familiar with. And it was um, Graphics Bayou or Bayou Graphics. Anyway, um, that's who Kathy is. So, oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I sent her off an email this morning granting her access to um, the paid membership section of our website. So she's all set up. She can go and download whatever she needs now. Right. And uh, Kathy, welcome to the mayhem and madness that is us. <laughs> we do have a little You're bit of fun. For a treat. We do have some great giveaways oh, today. Yes, we do. We do have great giveaways today. We have two uh, pencil sets, drawing sets from Tombow. Yeah. And we have two sets of Dynasty Micron brushes to give away. So Whoa, there's Micron. four giveaways today. Um, I'm really excited about that, uh, especially the Microns, because you know I love my Microns. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So we have a lot of stuff to cover today. This, Although this is not a difficult piece, there's lots of steps, and we are going to have some fun with it. And uh, if you guys are ready to get started at that, I so am coffee. I. See, and he's not ready. I'm not ready. He's not ready. I had to put down my coffee. Down shot. Okay. <laughs> Click me. You still got that swirly thing? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I can change it up if you'd like. We might. We'll see. I'll see what's available and I can... <laughs> So, um, you want robots? Uh, robots? No, I'm not a robot person. You want super gamer no. style? <laughs> I don't know. No, I think we're good with this swirly thing and the paint drips and all that stuff. That works. I, for me. I thought it was suiting. It is suitable. So, this is the piece we're going to work on. This is uh, Happy Easter Carrots. I have absolutely no idea where this idea came from. Couldn't even begin. I just I had a thought and I played with it, and this is where we ended up. So you know you can question the men my mental state all you want. <laughs> this is this is essentially what you get when I left my own devices. So uh, we're gonna do carrots. This is a fun one. I had I had fun doing this. This is not rocket science, but it is a lot of fun. So these are the materials we're gonna work with. Um, I use dictionary pages. Uh, the pages that I used are out of a German to, or an English to German dictionary from 1949. It was my father's dictionary. Um, it's an, it's, I love the tone of it, you know, that aged at the edges. I just thought I like the look of it. And I like the tiny little text. And I like that I can, you know, have one in English and that gives you the translation into German and vice versa because it has both. Um, this is a really fun piece of paper you could use almost anything but I did scan a couple of pages and put them into the pattern 
So if you don't have a dictionary like this, you can just simply pr make a color copy of those pages and use those. Apparently the swirly thing mm -hmm. looks like Tracy's being flushed down the drain. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> oh, that one stings. <laughs> it, it, just saying what it looks like. Mm. Ouch. Oh, uh, Crystal Hendricks received my beautiful set of nine brushes and zipper storage case. Nice! It that was, was lovely. That was the um, the prize for the um, for the members class last yes. month. Yeah. Right. Uh, and we've got a couple of nice ones again this month. Does it have to do with watercolor? It does. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> no, we've got a nice little set of watercolors. Um, I've got two this time around usually i have three but i have two this time so we have a nice little set of watercolors uh with a set of brushes Ooh. and then i have a nice little set of watercolor markers and brushes who are they from from tombo tombo so yeah so we have two nice prizes for our membership uh for the class on the 28th so they're that's exciting i like that what are you painting on um I'm painting on, this is a six by nine art panel. I've just base coated it black. You can get these at your local dollar store. Uh, these ones are from um, Michael's. No, these ones are not from Michael's. These ones are from Multicraft. Yeah, Multicraft. Sorry. These ones are from Multicraft. Uh, but again, they're a six by 12. Any surface will do. You could use um, a six by 12 piece of watercolor paper if you want to, uh, a media board if you want to, or even a 6x12 canvas will work just fine. What do you mean no sound? Don't you dare say no Don't sound. Don't say no sound. Click the, uh, you have to unmute, unmute <laughs> us. <laughs> There's sound. Wait, they, they have no sound and I'm telling them to. I'll say no sound. Yeah, uh... But it is showing up in the, um, you might have the video muted. Yeah. And I'm saying that and you can't <laughs> hear me. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> we've gone to great expense and great effort to make sure we do have sound. Yes. <laughs> we have so, studio quality microphones. We have studio quality mics, yeah. So this is the surface that we're working on, the 6x12 art panel. This is an inexpensive one. Um, I got this one, as I said, from Multicraft, uh, but you can find these at your local dollar store. Watercolor paper will work, media board will work, um, and canvas will work. And even if you've got, uh, you know, a journal page, you want to do this on a journal page, knock yourself out. This is not going to be, not a high-tech class. I'm also using um, some Tim Holtz uh, tissue paper. Um and you can use any of them. It doesn't matter what it is. It can have butterflies on it, like this one here. This is um, Entomology by uh, Tim Holtz Ideology collage paper. Uh, this one here is Typeset Composer. So it really doesn't matter. Uh, this is the typeset here. We're only using a small portion of it. You can pick or choose what you want to use. You can use newsprint if you want to. If you are... And I'll say you can't get your hands on some of this. It's not always that easy to find these things. But um, any kind of tissue paper, something with a print on it. This is an old one that's not a lot, no longer available, but I have pieces of it in the studio. So I keep all those little scraps because you never know when they're going to come in handy. And then uh, you have this um, pages out of the dictionary. You, as I said, they're in the pattern if you want to just print those off in color or in black and white. doesn't really matter. Um, I just happen to like that, but we're going to paint it orange anyway, so it doesn't really matter what color the paper is. Oh, there's Edward Hensley. Hey, Edward. Uh, he says, I'm so excited we're getting a Joanne's Fabrics in Myrtle Beach. Oh my goodness. Another store for me I, to visit. <laughs> I love Joanne's. Um, the other thing that I'm using is my grunge set. The This is the um, Stampendous grunge set of stamps this little five piece set i'm also using my vintage note stamp again um if you don't have this particular set or this particular stamp don't worry about it just you go digging through your own stash and find things that are just 
I like the text, the script, some simple pattern, nothing too bold or big. Um, this is just for the background. So it doesn't really matter if it's exactly the same as what I've used, but this is what I'm using is that grunge set. We do have these on the website, both that, um, I think we still have some of these left and that grunge set. Stencils, uh, quite honestly, you can use whatever you like. I'm using random polka dots, uh, 3 8 polka dot, uh, my crowded polka dot, which is this one, it's just like oodles of little dots. And then in that grunge set is this stencil here. This is like a brocade. I know it's hard to see it against that black, but actually if you put it on the black, you, you can see it. Okay. There we go. So this one is enclosed in the stamp set and that grunge stamp set. So it's a handy little stencil to have. I just thought we might as well make use of it. And um, I'm also using this rose stamp, but again, it, you don't have to use exactly what I used. Um, and then you can use like the one eighth polka dot if you want to. I've got stars, I've got hearts. I have all kinds of stencils, but these are the ones that I'm going to work with. It's that brocade out of the grunge set and then all of these polka dots because I'm obsessed with polka dots. That's, there's no doubt about that. And... I, I, something happening in chat that I'm a little curious about. What's that? I must have missed it completely. Um, everybody's congratulating Becca Buckner. Oh, what's up, Becca? I, I may have missed... Something clarify. Okay, I can't be left out of the loop here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had happy mail this week. Oh, yeah, we didn't even go over happy, happy mail. mail I got happy mail... I want to see what Becca Buckner's got to celebrate. What are we celebrating? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. We have sound. Yes, of course. The barcode, barcode stencil is my favorite. Oh, yeah. There's a really cool barcode stencil. Hmm. I missed it, too. <laughs> Sheila Landry. <laughs> Oh, Cindy Niz is on, got her microns. New grandbaby. Oh, congratulations. New babies are always a nice thing. So, new baby smell. Uh, yeah, kind of like the new car smell. Yeah. Until um, they poop. Until they poop. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> What's it with you and pooping? <laughs> it's true, though. I know. Ah, like, oh, baby smells so good. Ah, oh, new baby. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Baby poop is what mix of. No, I don't want to discuss poop. Uh, um, nuclear waste and Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I happy mail this week was so cute. So I got this little note. There's a cute little note on the back of it. Uh, it arrived the other day, and I had a great laugh. They're bath bombs. <laughs> I this is just awesome. These are bath bombs. They're skulls. Yeah. Like they're freaking awesome. <laughs> so Denise Van Newkirk sent me these. Uh Denise, thank you so much. I got the biggest giggle out of these. And they smell heavenly, by the way. Which one? I don't know what flavor they are. Oatmeal and honey. <laughs> You're not supposed to taste That's a them. juxtaposition for you, right? A purple <laughs> skull that smells like oatmeal and honey. I'm not getting it. But. I don't. Yep. And then this one is, it's called Trailer Trash Bath, Trailer Trash Bath Company. <laughs> this one is the Cherry Lemon Bob. And yeah, they do. They smell wonderful. So, Denise, thank you so much. I got the biggest kick out of this. It was wonderful to find that in, uh, in the mail this week. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. I just, I got all kinds of skulls now. I got my... My little monster doll back there and my bath bombs. and Was that it for Happy Mail this week? Yep. Yeah, just the bath bombs? Just the bath bombs. Yeah. I'm not complaining. No. I... <laughs> Usually you get like three pieces at one time. Well, it was just really sweet. So I got a kick out of it. Skulls. So, oh, that's the other thing. I did get Happy Mail, but it was stuff I got for myself. Ah, uh, yes. Um... One of the girls in the group had posted that she had found this on Amazon. Okay. 
And because uh, I'm always using those alphabet stamps for, oh, for you were talking to Deb about these, weren't you? Yeah. Anyway, look at this. This is a gorgeous set. But what I loved about this was uh, it has both the upper and the lower case of the alphabet. Nice. And it's just plain typeset, which is really nice because that's my favorite. But it also has all of the numerical stamps plus the punctuation, which you don't get in all of those little, these little ones, these sets here, which these are the ones that I usually find at, you know, Michael's yeah, or I'll Hobby Lobby or whatnot. Odd piece of punctuation. Yeah, usually something more, usually just uh, like an exclamation mark or something, yeah. but never everything. This set came with everything. Um, the other thing that I liked was they're, uh, they're quite substantial. They're big enough that they're easy to hold on to. And the lettering is about a quarter of an inch in size. So it's perfect for doing a whole bunch of things. So you have digits. I have digits, have the uppercase and the lowercase, plus all of the punctuation in there. Wow. And this set was like 20, $21. Off Amazon? Off Amazon. Wow. And it came in this nice little box. So it was uh, this, this was a really great find. So if you're looking... Um, this is an inexpensive. It was certainly well worth it. It's the equivalent of four sets of stamps for 20 bucks. So, yeah, that's it was a good. great little find. So, the, yeah, that's what I ordered for myself this week was that. Oh, and that was the other thing. <laughs> Remember are, these? Are, you're not, are you going to? Oh, yes. This. Um, okay, everybody knows that I'm a deco art girl. Everybody knows I'm a deco art girl. I've worked for deco art for years. And, um, I like to buy product from other manufacturers every once in a while just to try them out because I get to try all sorts I of decor stuff. I still can't believe you went to Plaid. Um, <laughs> but this just got my curiosity up. Um, and, and I really needed to um, to find out more about this. This is Folk Arts Color Shift. They're, um, yeah, they're quite pretty. It's a metallic paint um, and it's, Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, maybe a product the, review in the future. I, <laughs> I, I hate <laughs> to use the term uh, iridescent, but um, the blue is very pretty. It shifts to a green, which is kind of nice. Um, the This violet tone or purple flash, it's called, shifts to a blue, which is kind of pretty. Really? I'm seeing red. And Yeah, and a, more of a magenta than a purple, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and then there's this one, this green that shifts from this almost citron type green to a deeper green i'm seeing gold a green gold yeah it's quite pretty uh, but this one really got my attention this is like this is called aqua flash or brilliant turquoise and this one it just this screams peacocks to me it's just beautiful i'm, I'm thinking color. there's going to be a peacock feather anyway um so i decided to try them out and um, I had a little bit of fun with them. <laughs> I, I will say that they are uh, a little more expensive yeah. than, than what we're uh, generally accustomed to. I will say this. Um, the colors are spectacular. The coverage, um, you need at least three to four coats to get a really opaque coverage. This one has four coats on there. And the coverage is actually not too bad with four coats. Wow, that is shiny. Isn't that pretty? Um, I found these ones, the blues and the purples. This one has uh, three coats. It's nowhere near fully opaque yet. It still needs at least one more coat, minimum. Um, the blue, three coats. It still needs at least one or two. I would say two uh, to get full coverage. And there's that turquoise beautiful color but again three coats it still needs another coat so um as far as a specialty paint goes those colors and that flash that shift is really pretty um i really love the colors uh, coverage is not where i'd want it to be however having said that it is not unusual for metallics to have poor coverage yeah you know that you need multiple coats but i just thought you guys might be interested to see these they're just they're super cool however they were um i want to say about 24 dollars canadian for four bottles of paint yeah, it was a little on the steep side but 
um, for a special effect. I think they'd be. Pretty I'm pretty nice. sure she's going to do a full on review of it at yeah, a later time, at a, probably at a later date. But I, I just I really wanted to share that with you guys because I think that that's a really cool product as far as the you know that that flash. Um, I don't I don't think it shows up on camera as well as we'd like it to. Yeah, we're seeing a lot. Yeah, but it's shiny. It is very shiny, but it is a metallic, so yeah. not really but. seeing the the color shift. No, and I think once you have multiple coats on, yeah, it makes a difference. Yeah. So, but yeah, really cool product. And it, not re really a prismatic pigment, is it? No, it isn't. No. Yeah, I don't think so. But uh, yeah, really cool. And Renee will be so proud of me. The other thing we're using today is this. Can you say it? Identipen. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't have to read the label to get it. <laughs> I had. I have a total um, brain blank when it comes to this product. I keep wanting to call it a Sharpie, and it's not a Sharpie. <laughs> um, it's terrible. But, uh, yeah, Identipen. So I'm using one of those today as well on there. The other thing that I'm using is my white... I'm going to love a pearl. Your white gel pen. I'm using my white gel pen, my Uniball Signo gel pen. I'm using my red one and I'm using my black one. So I use these three today. Um, I really like this for that finishing touch on there. And I like the, the uh, identipen <laughs> for that as well, because uh, we want a slightly thicker line. So now that I have talked about everything under the sun except paint, let's play in some paint. All right. So... The first color we're going to use a little bit of warm white. We're just going to create a little bit of background texture. And I'm going to do that with my fugly brush, <laughs> which is my, I call it my fugly brush. It's my, uh, it's a dynasty encaustic oval. It's a natural hairbrush. It's meant to work with wax. And I'm going to put a coat of warm white on my surface. It is not going to be fully opaque. It is not going to be pretty. It is going to have some black showing through. Um, a lot of these questions are probably going to be answered in a later video when she does a like a full product review on mm -hmm. on those color shift. So we don't want to answer too many questions, otherwise, it won't we, have we, anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> we won't have any content to create for you guys. <laughs> But I, yeah, I just wanted to show those to you because I thought they were pretty cool. But I, I have yet to do some more playing and figure them all out. So, but uh, just wanted to show you what I'd found. Yeah. And then she's probably going to come up with something fun to do with them. And... Well, yeah. <laughs> That's the whole idea. What's the difference between an identipen and the other? The identipen, oh. um, they are permanent markers. Uh, and paint, paint the paint doesn't bother them at all on the Identa pen. Um, this one is actually a Japanese ink. It's not a marker. It's a ballpoint pen, uh, but oh. with a, a very ultra black. Um, it's a Sakura ink. They're both Sakura inks. Yeah. But the Uniball is a little bit different. Um, that one is permanent. The Uniball is not. You have to seal it. I recommend that you seal it before you varnish. So I've got... I think I'm happy with that. Um, I put mine on so that it goes vertically. I just like the pattern to pull the eye that way. It's the only reason. And I'm going to dry this real quick. <laughs> and our next step is to put a little more pattern in the background. We're going to do that with that stamp set. Um, now, if you're going to do this background with the fluid acrylics, we're going to stamp first. If you're going to do the background with the Decorate Americanas, we're going to stamp after. The reason for that is that uh, if you want the stamps to show up and you're using the Americana colors, they're a bit more opaque, so you're going to end up burying your stamping. So to get that same look, you're just simply going to reverse the process, put the color on first, and then use the stamps. There you go. Sakura ink is a ink derived from natural pigments and water. Yep. Whereas Sharpie uses a solvent-based ink. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's the big difference between the two. <laughs> there we go. Paint's dry. Oh, 
I don't know how often I can say this, but I love this thing. <laughs> Go check out. Uh, yeah. it's Sandy McTeer Sandy has McTeer. these on her yeah. website. They're freaking fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I love them. I like the fact that it's so quiet. That's a big thing. Yeah. Okay, so now i got to reach my fluid acrylics. The colors I need for this are uh, cobalt teal hue, green gold. Oh, we are using the fluid acrylics. Uh, for this background and a couple of things. Uh, and we're going to use the cadmium orange hue and naphthol red light. And what can you use if you have Americana? And if you're using Americana, you're going to need cadmium red cadmium orange or uh you can also use tangerine if you don't have cadmium orange green gold is like margarita citron green you just need a nice bright yellow green and cobalt teal hue i use bahama blue for that of course and i've got some primary magenta which you could use tuscan red for that and i'm missing my yellow there it is diorolite yellow so there are the colors that we're going to use. So basically um, all three primaries and a bunch of secondaries. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Well done you. You have been listening. I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the colors we're going to use for this background. Now this part is really a lot of fun. Um, one of the things you're going to notice in the original is that I have all of this green and yellow up here. And it comes down. So we're going to do these in order. I'm going to start with that green right here, which is that green gold. So okay. I'm going to put a little bit of that on my palette. I may have to adjust the camera. Give me one second. Cutting off the top. Ah. Oops. Don't need that. Camera might freak out. He's just going to move things a little bit. Give us a little more. Ooh. Elevate this a bit. <laughs> so I like working in the vertical for this. So I'm going to grab, I want a nice big brush. I've got a big one inch faux squirrel angle here. I need it to be nice and wet. And we're going to start at the top. Where's my spritzer? This is the other thing I have handy. This is just a little spray bottle with just some uh, distilled water in it. So we're going to start with that green gold up at the top of our surface. Neatness doesn't count. <laughs> Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. Jessica's so. got pies. She's got pies? Yeah, she's baking pies. Oh. Now I can focus on today's show. <laughs> <laughs> So then I'm switching to some diorolite yellow, which is that really bright school bus yellow. If you're using Americana, you can do this with saffron yellow. So I've got green, I've got yellow, and then I want to bring a little bit of primary magenta in here, right in the middle. Cool. Notice I'm not really worrying about how perfect this is. You'll see why in a second. Just like that. And then I'm going to very quickly do the same thing with some cobalt teal hue. Again, an in your face color. Love these fluid acrylics. Love the vibrancy. Love the transparency. Love, 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 love. So now these are all still wet. So you're going to take your little spritz bottle and you're going to spritz everything. What is in the spritz bottle? Just distilled water. Okay. Just tap water. It doesn't have to be distilled. What are whoopie pies? Oh, whoopie pies are amazing. Whoopie pie? Whoopie pies. Chocolate cookie, chocolate cookie, whipped like a marshmallow cream filling. Oreos. No, better. <laughs> 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 so now that I've got that sprayed, I'm going to tip my board forward. And then I'm going to tip it back. And I'm going to let it run. How cool is that? You can do this as often as you want. I'm going to grab a piece of shop towel here if I can 
reach my... Oh my god. I'm out of shop towns. I'll get you some. That's okay. I don't need it right now. Bigger than Oreos? Big Oreos? Oh yes, bigger than Oreos. Big Oreos. Yeah, whoopie pies are to die for. So I'm going to let that color run like so. And then I'm going to stop it. And I like to take my little spray bomb and add a little more water in spots and get more drips. I like it like that. Now you can do this the other way too. I like that if you turn it the other way and let the colors run together. Come ça. Oh, I like that. Look at how that red turns into the orange. And then we'll run it, let it run the other way. How fun. There, I'm happy with that. Actually, this is really nice and soft. So I'm going to dry this and then we're going to do it again. Now this one's going to take a little bit longer to dry because uh, the, thank you. Three of these? Nope, that's good. Thanks. Now I'm doing that vertically because it's following the pattern that I already have set in there with the background. Now the nice thing about these fluid acrylics is once they're completely dry, they're dry. It's very difficult to reactivate them once they're completely dry. Mr. Man is adjusting my microphones. Now, if you want the color to be more intense, you just simply repeat this. If you like it the way it is, this is my rule of thumb, stop when you like it. If you like softer, more muted tones, then stop. If you want them a little more in your face, then add a little more color. So you just simply dry them and do them in layers. And the more layers you put on, the more depth you create. So I'm almost dry here. I just want to make sure I don't want to reactivate this. So it has to be completely dry. I love how that looks. Uh, you have inadvertently committed yourself to making those for Renee. What? What, what did I miss? <laughs> Whoopie pies. <laughs> Uh-oh. So I'm going to take a little more of that cobalt teal and throw some on. And a little more of that primary magenta. Again, you notice I'm not really worrying about getting them neat and tidy. Oh, there's a good question. If you're using Americana, uh, -huh. uh do you use washes so they will run? Yes. Use yeah. it. Keep it really watery. Nice and thin. Nice and thin. Don't worry about it. Neatness does not count for this. And then we're going to do that green up at the top. I love that green gold. And then as soon as I've got the color on, I'm going to go back in with my spritzer. This is going to help keep those colors wet. And then I can do this again. Ooh, and I love how this does that. Tip it that way. And then I'll do it again this way. Oh, Edward has to go see Mama. Good boy. You go see your Mama. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. And I'll definitely be in the members. Uh, be there for members night. Big hugs. Woohoo! <laughs> Have a good one, Edward. Stay safe. So I, I think I'm happy with this. Now, the fun part about the stamping is that you can do the stamping at any time because these are transparent colors. <laughs> they would make it through the mail. I would make them for Renee. No. <laughs> do not send me cookies. <laughs> I've got a line I'm not happy with, but that's okay. And yes, I said that. Don't send me cookies. <laughs> Don't send him cookies. M my... My connections for cookies are too grand as it is. <laughs> Ginger snaps from Karen. 
There we go. Oh, okay. Wasn't it Sandy who sent me cookies? Sandy sent you cookies? Yeah, right. I did a logo for her. Yeah. She sent me cookies. Well, you wouldn't take I wouldn't money. take payment. <laughs> you wouldn't take money, so she sent you cookies. I love this part because what happens, happens. Uh, what are you going to do to the edges? I'm going to, well, you'll see at the end. I'm going to talk about how to finish this off nicely. But I think I'm happy. I like how the colors diffuse when you do this. So you can let the drips and runs stay solid if you choose to. That's entirely up to you. Or you can let them be um, more diffused and softer. That, again, entirely up to you. Do you think this technique would work on canvas? As well it as does work on canvas. I have done this on canvas. And it also works really well on watercolor paper. Okay. If, does it have to be a smooth surface? Um, ideally, yes, because if it's dripping, it's going to follow the texture in the can in the surface, whether it's canvas. Yeah, that could or, end up being, looking pretty cool. It could look really cool. It could also not... <laughs> there's always that possibility but there's always that possibility regardless yeah. so i'm going to dry this and then we're going to add some stamps just to put some more interest in here are you cleaning your brush between colors yes i rinse them out just so that i don't end up with mud <laughs> <laughs> they can Brown. get very muddy if you have too many colors in the brush so I'm going to dry this. This is a really fun way to create a colorful background. In this particular case, we have the the main focus of the design takes up almost a full third of the of the surface area. So we have the ability to hide things that we're not happy with. So you can move the design up and down. Um, in fact, I'm thinking I'm going to do just that. I'm going to bring the carrots down the page and I'm going to put the lettering up top just to change it up. All right. Uh, Jessica says, Tracy, meet me at Hobby Lobby. I'll send you home with whoopie pies. <laughs> Hobby Lobby in Bangor. Careful what you wish for, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> that might not. Your credit card's going to take a beating. <laughs> don't worry about hers <laughs> I love Hobby Lobby mainly because there's so much in there to just like, for everything there's oh. <laughs> Deb and I did our before all of the madness began uh, Deb and I used to travel to Hobby Lobbies all over the place all along the, uh... all along the west coast of the US we would just you know every Hobby Lobby every Hobby Lobby in the area, you know, was punished with thunder. Oh, I gotta go check on the puppers. So we're going to, uh, from this point, we're going to start adding some stamping. Now, as I said, you can do the stamping at any time. It can be done before, it can be done after. It doesn't have to be um, at any specific time. You can do it after you've put the color on or before, it doesn't matter. Um, if you're using Americana to do this, I would recommend doing the stamping after simply so that the uh, the stamping doesn't get buried by the paint. So I'm using two stamp sets. I'm using my vintage note stamp and I'm using my grunge set. I love these. This grunge set is my favorite. Um, it's a great bargain because you get five stamps in it. Um, you get this great one here. This is the sort of an old uh, manifest uh, I love that one. I just like the old script. I'm obsessed with that. Then there's this sort of cracked paint looking stamp. And then this signature block that I really like. This pretty little scrolly design, which is very appealing. And then, of course, it's got to have a cancellation stamp. I have a, an obsession with things that are round. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Cancellation stamps, polka dots. I'm just, I'm obsessed with them. I use them in everything. And my postal stamp, we finally got those in. Um, we were out for a little bit, but we got a whole bunch of those back in. Um, so I have a tendency to lean towards using those a lot. So this is my favorite stamp set. And then, of course, that vintage note, because I really love this this old scripty handwriting thing. Just, it, it works for me. 
So that's what we're going to use. Now you can use black paint and a uh, small brayer for this. I use these little brayers quite frequently. And they're simple. You can just simply roll this into acrylic paint, use the brayer to load the stamp, and then stamp your surface. Um, today, I'm going to use a stays on stamp pad for this, but I wanted to tell you about the, the, the brayer in case you don't have access to these. They're not, not that easy to find these days, it seems. So I'm going to start with my vintage note and I'm going to load up my stamp with that stays on stamp pad. And I'm going to add a little bit of script here and there. I don't, um, I don't like it to be too perfect. I would, in fact, I prefer it not to be. And so, but I just like to add a little bit of script here and there. I think that's enough. So there is our script stamp. Now I love this one. This is that cracked paint stamp. I'm going to load this one up again, just by rubbing it with the uh, stays on stamp pad. And I want to put some crackle down in the bottom here, just like that. I'm going to do the same thing up top because I just, I like this. There's no real rule to where this goes. Um, you don't even have to use the whole stamp if you don't want to. Just use a portion of it if that's what you like. And I'm gonna do just that. So I have a little bit of that cracked paint look in a few places. And then I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use all of them, I should say, but I'm just gonna load this up. And I'm going to put that one in here. It doesn't matter if it overlaps with things. It really doesn't. Um, I just happen to like the way this one looks. So I'm gonna tuck a little bit of that in, just a portion of it in there. And then this signature block, I like the textures in the background of this. And then there's that really elegant handwriting. Um, it's a pretty one. And I wanna put that right there. Like that. Mm, I love the way that looks. And then I'm going to put another one down here somewhere right here. And again, I'm not necessarily using the whole stamp. I like how it looks when it goes off the page. And then we have this one. And then I love this little scrolly one. I want to tuck little bits of that in because I, I just like the pattern it creates. And let's do that this way. pretty. And again, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. In fact, I find things more interesting if they're not, especially when it comes to mixed media. Now you can do as much of this as you want or as little as you want. Now I've got that little cancellation stamp and I am, as I said, moderately um, obsessed with this cancellation stamp so it's going everywhere I'm putting a little bit of it all over the place just to fill in some areas and make things a bit more interesting so there you go I've got all of my stamping in place some of it is nice and clear other portions of it are not and that's okay oh, um, Kathleen is asking if you pat the ink the stamp pad yeah does it come out stronger um it does uh, this is an older one i like to use the the rubbing method because it's an older stamp pad the newer ones when they're really juicy um it, be careful just tapping it on because when they're really juicy you can get way too much ink on the stamp and so. <laughs> she doesn't clean her stamps not but, very often <laughs> but <laughs> but what do you clean the stamps with when you use the stamp pad i uh, baby, wipe. baby wipe i just use a baby wipe to wipe them down uh, there's a variety of cleaners you can actually buy stamp cleaners oh, yeah. um, i prefer using a baby wipe just wipe them down and that's about it um because i use paint on a lot of my stamps um i will clean 
they will go quite a while before they get cleaned and then I just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol or hand sanitizer to clean them. Tea break. <laughs> <laughs> Tea break. What else so, we got here? Uh, so I'm satisfied with that. I like the look of that. I missed a bit because <laughs> I had to take puppers out for a pee. <laughs> so I've got my line drawing. And as I said, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to bring my carrots down a bit. And I'm going to take my lettering and put it up top. That's the great thing about mixed media. I can do whatever I want. So I'm going to tape that into place. <laughs> Gave my dog a bath and a blow dry this morning. <laughs> what a floof ball. A floof. He's a floof. Our gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> he decided there was something in the, the buffet that he wanted badly oh, God. the other day and so he was hanging around the door to the buffet <laughs> and we were trying to figure out what the heck he wanted and then when we opened the door he started pulling on the toy box mm -hmm. so because we have a toy box in there that keeps all the cat toys in it and so we had to pull it out and he just lost his mind he was trying to get the box open <laughs> and so we ended up got the box open for him and he took his teddy bear out so about 22 pound feline running around the house with a teddy bear <laughs> in his mouth so he's mildly obsessed with the teddy bear these days can the stays on ink stamp be re refilled yes you can actually buy a uh, squeeze bottle of stays on ink that you will refill your stamp pads cool yeah what is the best way to store your stamps? I a Tupperware I, container. Uh, yeah, I keep mine in Tupperware containers so that they're you know not exposed to uh, air a lot. The other thing I remember to do: every one of them comes with this little case, this little plastic cover. I keep that. Some people throw them out. I do not. It's stamped right on it. Do not discard. <laughs> <laughs> Protective inner cover. She reads instructions. I read instructions. Um, and I like these ones. I have found that one, they last a long time if you keep them closed with that liner in place. And I store mine in um, containers when they're not in use. So I have them in large Rubbermaid containers, little storage bins, whatnot, so that they stay nice and fresh. And then when they do start to um, deteriorate, run out of ink, what have you. <laughs> I thought you said Gizmo was thick. He sounds kind of smart. No, he's not. <laughs> he's um, objective driven. Yes. Yeah. Once, he, once he's got something in mind, it's like getting into my storeroom there. He's getting in. He's getting in come hell or high water. Garage. He this likes... is a cat that stares at a corner. Yeah, he's a strange one. Yeah. He just sits there and stares. Yeah. I think he just, he's sleeping with his eyes open, honestly. <laughs> uh, do you use tracing paper for your design or heavier paper like? Copy paper. Like copy paper. I don't use tracing paper. I don't like tracing paper. I find I, it's, I don't know, just, I don't like it. Um, so I tend to make a photocopy of my line drawing and I just put it on copy paper. And then I can use it multiple times. You might notice that there's this is actually the original line drawing. <laughs> <laughs> this was my original sketch before I, I made a separate finished line drawing. So you could see I was sort of playing with pattern ideas and, and whatnot in here. But um, so I'm going to, I just wanted to do a variation of this. I, I really like this with the leaves up top here and the, you know, the happy Easter at the bottom. Um, I'm looking at my background on this. There's lots of red in here. And I think that that red's going to make that orange and those greens really pop out nicely. So I'm going to pull this down a bit so that the carrot almost reaches the bottom. Not quite, but almost. And then I'm going to use that lettering up top and put it up here just to change it up a little bit. But I think it'll work just fine. So, um... I'm going to tape my line drawing in place where I want it. And what was the name of the orange color that you're going to be using? In the fluid acrylic? Yeah. Uh, cadmium orange hue is the color that I'm going to use. 
and I'm going to use this Naphthol Red Light. Those are the two colors that I'm going to. It's only one carat that uses it. If you do not have the fluid acrylics, some cadmium orange tangerine will work just fine. And then um, go to a cad red or a, an orangey red. You need a fairly transparent orangey red. When you say copy paper, do you mean just regular paper that you print on? Yes. Yep, that's exactly what I mean. Yep. Yep. And the cheaper, the better. <laughs> uh, make sure you don't... Uh... No gloss. Yeah, don't use the glossy or heavy like laser printer. I just buy like the most inexpensive copy paper you can get. <laughs> you know, the stuff that's three ninety eight at Walmart. Yeah. No label mm -hmm. white packaging. Yeah. Just <laughs> inexpensive copy paper. So um I'm looking at this and I'm thinking maybe the dark graphite might not stand up, but we'll try it. So for tracing, so that I know where I've been, because and then the other thing, hello, make sure you get the right side down, matte side down, because I did that the other day, tracing tulips on a new piece, nah. traced the whole thing, realized my graphite paper was upside down, have a perfect copy on the back of the paper. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to use my red uniball to trace these leaves. And again, I'm, when it comes to doing these leaves, I'm not really worried about perfection. I just want them there. Carrot That's leaves. All. Carrot leaves. I know carrots don't have leaves like this. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> bunny leaves. <laughs> yeah, these are like bunny leaves. So, again, I am not really worried about the realism when it comes to this. Marjorie Eaton, late to the party. Hey, Marjorie. Glad to have you here, honey. I like the tracing paper because I can see through it. I, uh... I don't. I don't need to see through it. I just print my line drawing right on my copy paper and I use that. Um, the other thing, I never use a stylus. I, they absolutely drive me crazy. <laughs> you can't see what, where you've been. I can't see where I've been, but um, my biggest issue is that I find the graphite lines are too thick. I don't like the, the end result. I, I prefer a finer line. I find them easier to get rid of. That's why I hated Frisco. And Yeah, Frisco, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I find just in general that I have, you know, the, the copy paper stands up much better. I hated frisket. So I'm going to trace my carrots. Sooner or later, you end up having the part that you covered with frisket covered in the paint that you're yeah. filling with. And you can't, you can't tell. Yeah. And yes. I'm a, I'm a. I like lots of layers. Yeah, and after a while, I get buried. And then I can't see where my frisket was. Yeah. And then I end up taking, you know, 2,000 grit sandpaper to my edges, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, carrots, I just went with a really simplistic carrot design. I wasn't, and am not too concerned with reality for this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> screw reality <laughs> put your bunny design from last week on a cup working on it today oh cool putting the little fluffy bunny on the on a cup cool is that Don Lavelle <laughs> of course yep yes go check out Don Lavelle I think she has a Etsy. Or... Yeah, she's got an Etsy shop. She does some of the coolest things. I yeah. have a skull mug. I love this. <laughs> she does these tumblers that are... They're amazing. They're amazing. I don't know if she uses... Um... She uses a lot of things. She uses vinyl. She uses acrylic. She uses um, resin. Yeah. yeah go they're check really her cool. out. Yeah, you she makes go some check neat mugs. She does indeed. So I've got uh, my carrots transferred on here and we're going to have a little bit of fun with this uh, and this is 
just the way I like to do it. You can do this with gesso or you can do this with uh, just a little bit of warm white paint. Now, I'm gonna oh my go... God, I completely forgot about it. What? The bunny challenge. Oh, yes, the bunny challenge. How has that been going? Um, we've had four people post already. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. Nice. Still and got to the end of the month. We still have until the 28th to uh, paint the bunny from last weekend. Um, and you can paint it any way you want, my way or your way, on whatever you want. And then all you have to do is post a picture either on my, my Facebook page or on the Tracy Morrow Live Facebook page. Um, in order to post on either of those pages, you have to hit the follow button. It won't let you if you're not following that page. So, so... so Don Lavelle's put it on a mug. Yeah, she puts it on a mug. She's got to post it on there because we've got a really nice set of Tombow markers for the winner. Yeah. So. And any medium, any... Any medium, any style, any color combination. You do not have to paint it my way. You can paint it your own way on however you want, on whatever you want. But it has to be that bunny. It's got to be that bunny. You can adapt the pattern any way you see fit. It does not matter. If you post it on my page, you automatically get entered for that drawing. We're going to put all the names in the, the mighty wheel. The and mighty wheel. The mighty wheel. <laughs> and then uh, one of you is going to win a gorgeous set of Tombow markers. And they look awesome, by the way. Yeah, they do look awesome. I love my Tombow markers. And, okay, so now that we got that. You're filling that with warm white? This is just warm white. You can do this with gesso if you... if you have gesso on hand. I'm only using one coat. You do not have to get it perfect. The only reason I'm using the warm white is quite simply just to give us a base um, so that we don't have to, because orange is so transparent and you could be there a while if you wanted to get full opacity with orange. So I just, I like putting down this coat of white because um, just makes things a little easier in the long run. And you'll notice when I'm putting this down, I'm leaving a little gap. I usually do this when I'm base coating things um, because I hate tracing things on again. Um, I leave a narrow gap, as thin as I can get it, in between the various segments. The shading, the line work, all of the detail stuff, it's going to hide that anyway, so don't worry about it. So just get that warm white in there. Can we see the entries? You just yeah, gotta go you to just gotta Facebook. go to the page. Go to my Facebook page or go to Tracy Morrow Live. Yeah, go to Tracy Morrow Live on Facebook, and you should be able to. Yep. See see them there if they're posted. Yep. The ivory bunny is up there. Ivory bunny. Yep. She painted him in ivory color. He's really cute. Nice. So yeah. If you want to check them out, that you'll see them posted on the page. We're going to collect all of the images anyway, and we'll post all of them at once when we do the drawing, so everybody knows who's entered. Yeah. But it will be so much fun. Yeah. And it's a random drawing. We're not critiquing you. Yeah, or, no, we, not We just at all. want to see how creative you guys are. Yep. And then everybody that enters or posts, they're all going to get entered into that wheel, just the same way we do them, draw them here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put all the names in the wheel, and then the, the winner is going to get that set of Tombow markers. It's a set of 10 double-ended markers, and their retail value is about $30. Nice. Yeah. I have a, a set of them. I absolutely love my Tombow markers. Oh, Robin Storm's back to painting. Her shoulder is finally getting better. Good. Glad to hear that, Robin. <laughs> I finally figured out where where you are. <laughs> I'm easy to find. What size brush are you using to base coat? This one here is, I believe, <coughs> uh, it's a number four Pardon round. Me. It's a black gold round. This is just a fun, easy to do project. Nothing too strenuous. Linda, where have you been? Which Linda? Mr. Franco. Oh, 
She's been quiet today. She has been quiet. Or I've been missing your messages. Uh, yeah. You've been quite quiet today. Are you in your studio? I'm excited about our members project this month. We're doing a landscape. That's different. Using watercolor techniques. It's going to be fun. And you can use watercolor. You can use acrylics to do it. There's Yeah, it's going to be fun. And we're using ink and we're using pens. <laughs> it's going to be a hoot. Okay, so I got my carrots done. Now I got to do all these leaves. Now, there's a reason why I did these leaves this way, and you're about to find out why. Jessica Killeran really wants to feed the puppers. Does she? Yeah. She just uh, sent a $3 sticker Aww. saying fist pump. Fist pump. Yeah, feed the puppers. <laughs> I, th I think that that's a neat option that YouTube has that I know that people can make oh, contributions. That this way. is for you, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just filling in those leaves with a little bit of warm white. Again, neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. These leaves are not perfect. I've been putting comments on. You're just not seeing them. Sorry. He had to go out and feed the puppers. No, I, no, or I, take her for a whittle. Yeah. yeah. She is in her studio. Yeah. yeah. So. I bought watercolors from Dollarama. I hope they suffice. They will do the trick. That's. They will do the trick. Whether you use, you um, do not need to have like super expensive watercolors for this. We're having some fun and playing with some, um, some techniques. Not everybody has the the resources to go out and buy a, an eighty dollar set of watercolors. I myself did not go out and buy a set of watercolors because I have a closet full. <laughs> so, Over the years, she has accumulated. Collect, yeah, accumulated. I wouldn't say collected. Accumulated. Yeah. So, yeah, I have just an obscene amount <laughs> of I art supplies her, in the studio. I have seen her go to Michael's, buy something, come back and show everybody, like, look, look how cute that is. And one of us would go, you already have that. Yeah. And she'd, no, I don't. And then she'd go downstairs and realize how I yeah, do have I do that. Have that. She got excited for something she already purchased once before. Yeah. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Your father doesn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you can see, I am not really um, spending too, too much time getting these leaves perfect. I'm essentially just sketching them in. And Neat. Don Lavelle just donated $10. Thank you. You're awesome. You, yeah, you're awesome. Those of you that don't know, um, there is that super chat feature on our YouTube channel. Um, when we hit the 5,000 mark, there's a whole bunch of little odds and sods that uh, became part of the channel. One of them was this super chat thing, which I think is kind of cool. It's not, not our main goal, but... Um, People could make donations to the channel and Renee and I discussed what we would do with those funds and we decided that the best thing to do with them would be to donate them to our favorite charity, which is our local SPCA animal shelter. So that's so when people make a donation on Super Chat or if they order to buy a sticker or what have you, that's where those funds go. We just donate them to our local SPCA yeah. to feed the puppers and the kitties. We're See, ten dollars just fed you know a dog for a day. Yeah, a couple of dogs for a day. Yeah. Yep. It also means a vaccine for one. You know, it's just yep, yep. medical treatment and yep stuff like that. So, and every you know every little bit makes a difference. So, behavioral training. Yeah, could have paid for a trainer. Yep. So now I have my leaves and my carrots base coated. How fun is that? Yeah. Now, the fun part about this, to me, is this is where you start to stick stuff to stuff. 
this is for me this is the fun part so i take my line drawing comme ça and um, i usually do this with my light table i will take my dictionary page and i'll choose a carrot i did carrot number i think it's two or five whatever <laughs> you labeled them i labeled well i always number them so i know what i'm doing you know what you should do what should i do you should actually number them they are numbered no i mean oh <laughs> <laughs> Use the stamps you just got from Amazon. I could do that. One, yeah. two, carrot number one, two, three. Huh? Yeah. Not just a hat rack. Well. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to um, trace this on. I'm going to lay that on there. Just make sure my carrot fits on that page. Cool. The Don says, I it love does. all animals. So do we. We're creature people. Yeah. So I'm going to tuck my graphite paper in there and I'm going to quickly trace the shape of my carrot onto my dictionary page. If you have a light tablet, it's a simple matter of putting the line drawing on the light tablet, putting the page over top of it and just tracing it that way. So now I use the graphite paper because I wanted the shape onto my leaf and then I'm going to cut that out. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the tissue paper. And again, neatness doesn't really count. If it's not perfect, that's okay. By the time we're done, it'll be fine. I have a thing about cutting out shapes. I just, I like this look. It just creates a little extra dimension, a little bit of interest. So there's my carrot. That's carrot number one. And then I'm going to do the same thing with um, some of that tissue paper. So I have two different types here. I have this one. Actually, I have more than two different types. I have a bunch of different types. And oh, you know what? I'm going to try this one. I just I love this stuff. This is just fun. So this one has uh, flutter buys on it. I'm just going to cut. Oh, I like this with the cicada. I have a thing about old text. I have a thing about bugs. Uh, let's do the cicada. No, I don't think that'll work. Maybe it will. So I need to figure out how long I need this paper to be. So I'm just going to measure that space. Right about there should do. I'll cut that off. I don't throw out the little scraps because you never know when you're going to use them. And I just roll them up, stick them back in the tube. I do like that, that I can put that in the tube. I love this. So um, the nice part about this one is that it's very transparent. So I can do this. Oh, how cool is that? Let's do it this way. No, it won't, that won't work. Okay. I kind of like that cicada. So I want to do the cicada. I want to keep as much of that wing as I can. So I'm missing stuff. you're missing stuff. So I'm going to just trace right onto this paper. So I need a line there. So you can see where your paper was. So just so that I have my carrot traced on. And I'm going to cut that shape out of the tissue paper. How do you do that? I can see the, the paper right through. I can see the line drawing through the <laughs> tissue. It's easier if you have that light tablet. Yeah. Yeah. But mine is over sitting on the desk over there which is not serving me any purpose here. So I'm going to just cut out that carrot shape like so. And again, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. So now I've chosen these two carrots. 
That's my choice. You can choose whichever carrots you want. You don't have to do it the way I did it. Uh, at the moment, I don't think we have any other tissue paper from Tim Holtz besides the entomology. I have the entomology. That's all I have yeah. at the moment. I do love this one. I love that it's got butterflies and, and lots of text. And, you know, it's an interesting paper. There's lots going on in there, you know. So, and you're only going to use a small piece of it. So you don't need to, you know, worry about whether or not it's perfect. I just kind of liked that texture of the wing on there. So. So we have our paper cut out. So I'm going to set that aside. And now we're going to talk about this carrot. I'm going to move some paper. What a mess I've got going here. So this carrot on the end is going to be based with orange flame. <laughs> it's my favorite orange. Uh, Karen uh, rearranged her studio. <laughs> moved my paint table, computer, printer stand all by herself uh oh she won't be able to move tomorrow yeah so back is not good today <laughs> <laughs> see so i'm going to take that orange flame and i'm going to base coat that first carrot this is an in your face orange love no this kidding. orange. yep and i really like how that orange <laughs> looks against that blue don't overdo it. A little late for that. Yeah. You overdid it. What was the light table that you had for the giveaway a few weeks ago? Oh, yeah. Those things are flipping awesome. It was a mustache light tablet. Uh, it's a Staples brand? Nope, no, it is... Um, um, Prime Cables. Prime Cables. Yes. Yeah. And it's a, a very handy little tablet, let me tell you. Very, very handy. I have two light tablets. I have the, the Prime Cables one, which is very handy, especially for traveling because it's super light, super compact. Um, and I, if I want to take it upstairs, I can because it's an easy one. My other one is an Artograph light tablet, uh, yeah. which, which is a very expensive one. <laughs> and it's my fave. I absolutely love that yeah, one. That one's got... All sorts of different settings. and So does the, the uh, mustache one. Really? Yeah, it has some really nice little settings. It's a handy little rig. But they're, those ones, um, it's the difference between a $40 light tablet and a $300 light tablet. <laughs> I, I am pleasantly surprised with Prime Cables. Yeah, great company to um, deal with. I've only had one issue with them was the mm. one computer monitor. Yeah, a computer monitor that didn't work well. And, uh, a, what, within a week? Yeah, they within had a, new a week one at... we had a new one at the door. Yeah. Uh, I sent them some concerns, and then, I mean, I had the new one before they sent me the return labels for the other one. Yeah. Like, it, they were I, fantastic. It was ridiculous. The service was great. Yeah. So, that's nice and dry. Kate 52 with a $20 donation. Oh, nice. And she says, great opportunity to help puppers. Puppers, yes. Yeah. We love the puppers. And I just noticed her, uh, <laughs> she got a uh, golden retriever. Oh, <laughs> is that what's what her? For her uh, avatar. Avatar, cool. So, I want to know the name of the. The name of the puppers? Name of the puppers in that picture. Yep. Um, this is the, the carrot that we're working on right here. This one is, so uh, I'm going to use that rose stencil, which is rosebud. I love this one. This is one of my new ones. Um, oh, for Pete's sake. I've got so much crap on this table. It's not funny. Um. And we lost her PG rating. Now PG-13. <laughs> Just because she said crap. Yeah, well. Anyway, so I've got my, um my rose bud stencil i'm going to use a little bit of warm white for this oh oh what oh i got another stencil for you to use oh yeah uh oh so we got a bunch of new stencils in this week <gasps> yes we need to do that yeah 
Yep, we need to do that. Okay, so I'm using the rosebud. Do you want me to do the rosebud or do you want me to use that one? Um, I don't care which one. Doesn't matter. Okay, fine. We'll use that. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> this is a new stencil we get in this week. I love this one. Look at this. It's little popperins. Popperins. I'm going to turn it sideways because how fun is this? This is so fun. This is a cool stencil. I need a piece of tape. Here we go. Pop rinse. This is the fun part about this type of stuff is that there's no real rules. You don't have to um, use whatever you want. You can or use whatever, whatever you have. Like, or whatever you have. Exactly. That's the whole point. Um, oh, um, sorry. The orange is orange flame. It's orange flame. Yep. Yeah. What did I do with it? There it is. Right here. <laughs> Sheila Landry. Poppers. <laughs> Poppers. Or booty cats. Either ones. So, yeah, this is uh, DA315. It is orange flame is the color that I used for the base on this one. And I'm using a little bit of warm white. The name of the golden retriever in that picture was Jack. Jack. After Jack Bauer. Oh, from 24. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Was I love that show. love bug. Oh. And I have a strange feeling because you're using past tense. That he has crossed the rainbow bridge. Yeah, that oh. he's on the other side of the rainbow bridge. Enjoying his time. He's in reruns. <laughs> <laughs> he's in reruns. <laughs> so I'm using, um, I'm just using a quarter inch stencil brush. I am not worried about getting these perfect. The brush is nearly dry, so I just want to get the shape in. I'm not really worried about perfection. Just like that. I'm just using a little bit of warm white. Oh, that's so cute. Look at this. How cute is that? The paw prints on the... <laughs> I love it. Boom. I love it. So that's... What's the number on that one? It's DA72? You have it right in front I have, of you. Oh, not DA. It's M272 is the number yeah. for that little stencil. These ones are brand new. I love this. How cute is that on the carrot? That's awesome. <laughs> and then... Um, Just to change was, it up because you used yeah, rosebud on the I original. I used rosebud on the original. But you, you don't have to. You can use whatever you want. Polka dots, of course. Um, Three-eighth polka dot. Crowded polka dot. <laughs> random polka dot random polka dots and um this brocade i love this one this is the brocade that comes with that grunge set so um that let's do this one back here this one is going to be base coated pardon me the hiccups this one is going to be base coated with spiced pumpkin what that's this missing? color here which is sort of that muted out um orange tone and the Item number for that is DA310. I like spice pumpkin. It's a nice orange. A little earthy. And I grab my round brush. And I'm going to paint this one in here with that spice pumpkin. This oh. is just easier. We'll see you later, Allison. Remember, you can come to the YouTube channel and watch the rest of it if you want. Yep. It'll it'll be there forever. Yep. <laughs> oh my God, Tracy, that's hysterical. Reruns. <laughs> <laughs> He's in reruns. <laughs> He's in reruns. Uh, Renee, I got a 24-hour ban off of Facebook because a man ran up to my CRV asking me for a light. And when I said no, he pulled out a lighter. I said I would show him the meaning of drag racing if he touched my CRV. Uh, uh, uh. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would he run up and ask yeah. light if he had a lighter? People are strange. Getting stranger by the day. Stranger by the day. <laughs> so, spice pumpkin. One, you notice I am not putzing with any of this no. i am not worried about whether or not that color is opaque it doesn't matter so i'm going to dry this real quick 
and then we're going to stencil that. So fun. <laughs> so this is why I used that warm white underneath because I wanted to put a little opacity back there so that we're not having to put on 10 coats of paint. They're really liking the paw prints. I love the paw prints. It's so cute. And very appropriate. Little bunny prints. He was up to no good. Mm. Yeah. Fair yeah, enough. I would say so. You had to do what you had to do. Yep. Facebook didn't like it because you put it on their platform. Yep. That's that's all it was. So I am going to position this stencil so that I get the most out of it. I want lots of poker dots. And again, I'm using warm white for this. The brush is almost dry. These dots do not have to be fully opaque. Take a little care when you're at the edge. Again, they don't have to be perfect. You just don't want to have to clean white paint off your background. So, Somebody read that comment and reported you for inciting violence or something like <laughs> yeah. that. That's... That's the world we live in. Yeah, sadly. <laughs> Were there you we on go. Facebook Live? Yeah, I wouldn't do that on Facebook Live. Do, do, do not incite violence on a live because that will get you banned off Facebook. <laughs> there we go. So I've got white polka dots. Now, I got a little bit of white paint on my background. Let me show you something real quick. I'm going to take an angled shader, a little bit of water, and I'm going to scrub along that edge just like that with the angled shader. And I just come up to that line, and you can make that go away. There. I have white poker dots on my carrot. So then we have this one back here. The color I'm using for that is persimmon. This is such an odd color. It's not quite an orange. It's not quite a red. It's... Uh, and it's a little subdued. I do love this tone. Is... It reminds me of terracotta. A little more orangey than terracotta, but I love this color. Pupper walked all over the carrot. Yep, Pupper walked all over the carrot. So we're going to base coat this one. This one's a bit more opaque. Great color, though. Just a great color. Uh, Brenda Owens asking if you have any homework before Tuesday's class. No, ma'am. No homework. No homework. Just trace your line drawing onto your watercolor paper. That's it. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yep. What is Tuesday's class? 28th is the watercolor of the barn. Yeah, it's a watercolor of <laughs> a landscape. barn. Landscape. Yeah. A landscape. I had a lot of, of interesting questions in reference to the background um, class that we did last week, which or last month, which was a lot of fun. We got oodles of people painting with neat backgrounds. Um, somebody posted, I saw the post this morning, forgive me, I have forgotten who it was already. I do try to remember those things, but I forgot. Somebody had posted, um, they had done a Sherry Nelson piece of a red-breasted robin with um i think it's apple blossoms and they had done it on that barnwood background oh yeah and oh it was so pretty and they had some stenciling in the background over top of the barnwood and then they had some nice color added in there it was really well done really well done uh, marilyn haley barn is this a class i need to sign up for uh no actually it's uh, part of my membership group they have their monthly free class and we're doing a barn in uh, watercolor. watercolor techniques. Yeah. And you can sign up for the membership on YouTube. It's a blue join button. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to if you don't want to. But that's one of the benefits of being a member is you get a free pattern in a class. Every month? Every Plus month. a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. Because I can't sit still, that's why. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, if you don't want to join that, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and then you get updated on, you know, our lives and other content that is coming in the future. Yep. And the nice part is if you don't want to be a member, the pattern for that, that uh, pattern package, for lack of a better term, uh, will be available uh, the following month. Yeah. 
So on, on the 1st of March. You just have access to the video, that's yeah, all. The 1st of March, the February pattern will be available for everybody to purchase. Yep. But in membership. February, the members who are part of the membership group <laughs> get that for free just because they're a member. Yep. So um, this one back here, I'm going to stencil with this brocade. I really like this one. I'm just trying to. <laughs> Sometimes getting permission to think outside the box frees up my imagination. Yeah, absolutely. It's like being told you're you have permission to make mistakes. Yep. Um, for some people, that's really hard. If they're, especially when it comes to creativity, we always worry about making a mistake. How do I fix it? Well, who said you had to? For first of all, and even if you do make a mistake. Nine times out of ten, you learn more from the mistake than if you get it perfect the first time. The red-breasted robin was done by An Andre. Oh yes, Andrea. Andrea George, I think. Dis. Desorsi from Winnipeg. Yes. Yes, that's who it was. Desorsi. Yeah, she did a beautiful job of it. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to get this. Ah, there we go. Okay, now I got my. Thanks, Daryl. <laughs> Got my poop in a group. There's Andrea George is, is with us, and so is An An Andre de Source. I always get that. So there's Andrea and Andre. So I'm using that warm white to just roughly stencil in this pattern. Don't worry about getting it perfect. It does not matter. Can you see the paper you put on the carrot if you paint over them twice? Yes, because I'm using fluid acrylic. Yes. And we're using very thin washes, even if we're using the Americana. Yeah. So we're, it, yeah, you're going to be able to see it. So I'm just very loosely stenciling this in. Ooh, there's a blizzard in Winnipeg right now. Yeah. Have fun with that. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. I like that this is not perfect. I find that I really like that sort of distressed and rustic. See? Look how pretty. I don't like them fully opaque. I just think it's more interesting if they're not. So I've got all of my stenciling in. So now it's time to put that paper onto our carrots. I'm using a little bit of matte medium. You can use um, decoupage medium or mod podge or whatever you have on hand. You don't have to have exactly what I'm using. Um, I like matte medium because I find it works really, really well. So I'm going to put a coat of matte medium on my carrot back here. Comme ça. I put it all over the place. The thing about the matte medium is it dries perfectly matte. It's not shiny, so it doesn't matter if I go over anything. So I've got a coat of matte medium on, and I'm going to take my paper carrot and I'm going to lay it into the matte medium maybe uh, three, there we go three days in a row for us in Winnipeg snow in our backyard is six feet high <laughs> yeah ours melted ours melted we had a, <laughs> our the last winter storm we had we got mostly rain Oof. and we had about a good three or four feet of snow and it's almost all gone so I'm going to lay that tissue paper in and then I'm going to use matte medium over top of it to seal that paper down. Just like so. You see, carrots are good for your eyes. At my age, I need all, <laughs> all the help. So now we're going to come over to this one and this is where we're going to put the dictionary page. Now, this is where I put the dictionary page. You can put it wherever you want. If you want to reverse it, put it on a different carrot, go right ahead. You do not have to do it the way I did it. <laughs> Yorkies are so cute. A tenant in my apartment I manage has hers come to my door for a nummy and a smoosh. Oh. Yorkies are awesome. They are. Um, but they can be spoiled very easily. Oh, like the one upstairs is not spoiled? <laughs> No, I mean, like, take advantage of the spoiling. Oh, yeah. So they're smart is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are smart. Yeah. They're, okay. good. They're, 
they're good dogs for they're uh, the I, I would say elderly older the, older i'd be very careful with that yeah. part of conversation my son yeah. <laughs> for older people uh because one because it's a smaller dog easier to manage yeah um unlike my mother who likes rottweilers yeah i like big dogs she likes big dogs <laughs> so i could see her being you know <laughs> 85 years old and going, I want Fluffy to come over. And Fluffy is, you know, 110 pound Rottweiler. Yeah, the, I'd be head, happy. Head the size of a Volkswagen. <laughs> and that dog would love her to bits. Yep. Speaking of puppers. Oh, God. Miss Dot. Oh, no. I, uh, I went out and did a little bit of shopping last week. and um, <laughs> The dragon. <laughs> I bought Dot a dragon. It was cute. It's a dog toy, but it's a dragon. And uh, her reaction was hilarious. This is a dog that can't use her hind legs. Yeah. For those just but tuning she, in. <laughs> she managed to get across the living room and down to the front door in short order, let me tell you. <laughs> I, one, she didn't even see it. But I think she must have heard it. Either heard bag. it, smelt it, or just I had I don't know, a... but she knew that I had something in that bag for her. Yeah. She knew. Yeah. So, yes. she. I thought knew. all dogs should be spoiled. Oh, I agree. To a certain point. <laughs> Cause our... I'm a trainer. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm usually the one telling my father and my mother, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I understand why they're doing it. Miss Dot is spoiled. I spoil her, too. Yeah. But I put a limit on my spoiling. So... We've got uh, our dictionary page and our tissue paper, and we have to put some color on both of these. Now, um, I'm going to use the cadmium orange in the media line for this one. Deb's got coffee. Oh, good. That means English is no longer a second language. Well, all she said so far is, I want a Yorkie. She wants a Yorkie. <laughs> <laughs> it's because she misses her Murph. Yeah. So... I'm just putting a single coat, heavily thinned, by the way, because this acryl this fluid acrylic, very heavily pigmented. I'm using a ton of water to thin this out. You do not need to use this color full strength because it is very strong. And I'm putting that right over top. Now, my paper, I goofed when I cut this and when I stuck it down because... I've got a line right here that is actually that white base coat. This is the nice part about this media line is that, and having that white base coat down is that I can hide all those little boo-boos. So I've got my bright orange on top of that carrot. Now this carrot we are doing with uh, some naphthol crimson or naphthol light, red light. Napthol? Which is naphthol. It's a very orangey red. Sounds flammable. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> I think, which is the whole point. Um, so I'm going to use that naphthol red. And it is a strong color, by the way. Like, really strong color. I'm going to pull that naphthol red. Up one side of my current. Like so. And then I'm going to use that little bit of cadmium orange on the other side <laughs> and i'm gonna let those two colors run together do you have all your brushes on your table yes yes <laughs> <laughs> well no no <laughs> i have a lot of brushes on my table but not all of them <laughs> yeah she has a lot of brushes on the table you name it she's probably got it at least one yeah of it and sometimes two three so i've taken that cadmium red on one side the naphthol or cadmium orange sorry on one side and then the naphthol red on the other side and that is how i painted that last carrot so now time to dry renee what is the best way to train a fearful dog uh get a trainer that specializes in fearful dogs <laughs> yeah um there's so many different ways 
You have uh, to figure out why they're fearful. Yeah. So now we're going to stencil both of these carrots. I love this one. This is the crowded polka dot. This is a fun stencil to use. And I try to use it so that I fill up most of this space, but I like it to come off of the carrot a little bit. So I'm going to use a little bit of warm white. Again, I am not using this color full strength. The brush is almost dry because I don't want these dots to be fully opaque. They just want to be there. The only thing I could suggest would be lots of re reassurance. Yep. So lots and lots of treats. Let them know that they're doing good. Yep. Lots of pets. Lots of affection. Uh, again, I don't know why the dog's fearful. You got to figure that out first. Yep. And once you get them to a very comfortable point, you got to desensitize them. Yep. If it's loud noises, there's going to be loud noises. Yep. He's got to get used to being around loud noises. Yeah. Um, if they're afraid of other dogs, uh, that could go one way or the other. It could end badly for your dog. It can end badly for the other dog. So that's something you got to... Have to figure out what's causing it. Yeah. So now let's put polka dots on this one. Now these are black polka dots. Black polka dots. I know. Black polka dots. So I'm going to arrange my um, random polka dot stencils. So I want to get as many dots on here as I can. So, and the nice part, I'm going to use my uniball for this. I'm going to trace these dots with my, my black pen so that I have a dot pattern all over my carrot. And then I can say, no, I need a few more dots. So I can take my stencil and move it around and add dots as I see fit. <laughs> I like dots. Lemmy, I'm trying to get Lemmy to stop barking at everything. <laughs> whether there is something or not. Okay. Hey, you got to associate the barking with a bad behavior. So... Figure out what's making them bark. Well, not just figure out what's making them bark, um, but you got to let them know that that behavior is unacceptable. Yeah. Um, if you have to put them on a leash to do it, do it. E collars, again, go see a trainer, learn how to use one properly. If not, go check out Tom Davis. He's a buddy of mine down in New York. He does awesome work with e collars. It does awesome work dogs. Period. <laughs> so I've taken, um, I used my, I don't know if you can see that, but I used that stencil to draw those dots on. And now I'm thinning out a little bit of lamp black and I'm heavily thinning this because I don't want these dots to be fully opaque. So I'm just putting a wash of black inside that line. So it's going to read as black, but it's not fully opaque you'll still be able to see the text right through it so make sure you thin it out make it as as light as you want to i just i decided to do it this way because i didn't want the black dots to be fully opaque and by stenciling them they would have been and darker than i wanted and i did not want them too dark so i decided to do it this way which was just wash that in yeah, go check out Tom Davis. He's on YouTube. No bad dogs. No bad dogs. Go check out his merch store, too. He's mm -hmm. an awesome trainer. He's been doing this a long time. He looks like he's 12, but he's been around <laughs> a lot longer than you think. Yeah. And he's very, very good. Okay, so I'm going to draw my black polka dots. So now I have black polka dots. I have white paw prints, white polka dots, brocade, and crowded polka dots on my carrots. I'm happy. I like the fact that I can do this and it doesn't, there's no absolute right or wrong way to do this. So if you choose to use a different 
stencil, change it up, use different patterns. Um, we went from roses to little paw prints. Um, you could go from polka dots to checks. You could do it if you, if you wanted. Jerry's got an awesome suggestion for your next stencil. Oh. Bunny feet. Bunny feet? Bunny prints. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bunny feet. Yeah. What about Look. bunny leaves? Bunny, bunny leaves. leaves. <laughs> so I'm going to... I know that somebody out there is wondering how come I haven't used it yet, but here we go. Um, Asphaltum. We're going to float in here. Put our little shading of Asphaltum in there. <laughs> Do I know any good dog trainers in Dallas, Texas? I know of one. And he's probably going to turn you down because of the breed of dog you have. Because he handles Malinois and working line dogs. Yeah. Uh, he, he is a great trainer, but definitely not what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, he's he's training larger breeds. Yeah, larger breeds, and he's usually training them for... For specific tasks. For work. Yeah. Uh, he does manage basic obedience first. Yeah. It's common practice, but... Not he he won't take on a cocker spaniel. And go check out his Instagram. He's the worthless handler. <laughs> the worthless handler. Yeah, he he's funny. Uh, he apparently likes taking pictures of his dog pooping, but okay, <laughs> it's, it's a thing on his Instagram. Okay, a lot of people are doing it for some weird reason, mm -hmm. but they're all police canine, military canine. Gotcha. Okay, so I've got a um, nice little float of asphaltum. This is just to set this background back a little bit. And it pulls our carrots forward. And I'm going to do the same thing in here. I'm going to put a nice little float back here just to lift that up. And it's going to define these carrots nicely. Actually, no, I think he's in South Carolina, now that I think of it. Okay. So. My dogs have me trained? They usually do. Yeah. Well, no dog has us trained. Problem with our little pug's surgery? Ooh, pug went in for surgery. Oh. Is that he likes to jump up on everything. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, surgery is... Uh, it's a difficult time, especially when you're in the training stages. <laughs> okay. No food talk yet? What do you want? Uh, yeah. What are we having tonight? I think we're having a bunch of leftovers. Some yeah, chicken we are. Tea, chicken tikka. We got pizza. We got... Uh... It's time to clean up the leftovers. Yeah, clean up leftovers. That chicken tikka was delicious. Huh. That extra tin of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm having? Mm -hmm. I'm taking a slice of pizza and putting chicken tikka on it. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to start separating these um, carrots i'm using asphaltum i know you're terribly surprised by that so i'm putting a shadow to lift these carrots off of each other i don't want them to be too too defined so i'm just going to put a nice little shadow to lift this carrot off of the one in front of it. Just like so. And I'm going to do the same thing to all of these. And it's just a nice float of asphaltum. Anybody that it paints of that carrot. Come so. And then we're going to shade this one as well. I know, I've been flipping this thing over like crazy. So, there we go. I get a nice shadow in behind this. So, there we go. I love Ashvaltum for this, especially on these earthy oranges. It works really, really well. And 
does not have to be the perfect float. We just need to separate these a little bit. We're going to deepen this, by the way. We're going to take a little bit of lamp black on that dirty brush. And I'm going to add some asphaltum to it. Essentially, I'm going to make a nice dark brown. And this is the color that I use to really separate these um, carrots and give them nice dimension. I'm going to pull a float of that. It's just, I've darkened the asphaltum with a little bit of that lamp black. That's all it is. And I'm going to go back in and I'll deepen that shadow like so. Make sure you keep lots of water in the brush. There we go. Look at that. And this helps separate those carrots even more. Gives us a nice dark shadow. Look at that. And I'm going to do the same thing on all of these just so that I get that nice separation. Just like that. So that it's just a brush mix, little touch of lamp black mixed with asphaltum so that we get a nice deep dark chocolate colored brown. And then we're going to pull that color down that side and shade our carrot. Don't forget get that spot in there too. <laughs> there we go. Even my husband, who only listens to my paint videos in the background while he's doing other things, <laughs> mm -hmm. says, when is the asphaltum coming in? Oh, <laughs> you knew it had to happen. <laughs> Sooner or later. Whoa. What's with the drop? So we're going to come to this one here. I like to take that asphalt and black mixture and we're going to shade that side of it. I am fairly aggressive with it on the edges because you're going to, you'll see why. I'm going to put in a fair amount of, of color at the edges and I need to shade this one as well. He's learning through osmosis. <laughs> <laughs> there we go so I've got my carrots are all shaded so now we have to put in a highlight and I'm going to use a mezzaluna for that I have a um, nice little mezzaluna brush I'm using a medium or a large you can use either one this is a large um, I do have an extra large one right here I think I might use this one. Melissa Jones says, I've watched you, Deb, and Sheila, and now I know why they call you the Three Musketeers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're all very talented. So I'm using a, a Mazzaluna just with a little bit of warm white, and we're going to put a highlight on all of our carrots. And it's, oops, a little too much paint. There we go. Dawn Lavelle says she's going to make little paint palettes like our pins out of polymer clay for earrings. Oh, that would be so cute. So I'm just dry brushing a highlight onto my carrots. What kind of brush is that? This is a Mezzaluna. It's is a it, Dynasty Mezzaluna. Is it typically used for dry brush? It is a dry brush, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, what I love about the paper on this is that this paper tends to wrinkle a little bit when it gets wet. And so it makes for great texture. So I want a brighter spot at the t towards the top left-hand side of my carrot. <laughs> But Sandy is the third. I am just the extra, <laughs> <laughs> says Sheila. Well, it, Sandy and Deb and I call ourselves so uh, we three friends um, when we're traveling and doing 
um, trade shows and, and whatnot at conventions and what it just makes life so much simpler because we can work together um, and we help each other out. We work each other, you know, we all work the booth together. We do all these things together and we came up with the name We Three Friends and then we abbreviated it one year to WTF. <laughs> <laughs> We three friends. We three friends. Yeah. Apparently, some people got upset about that. Somebody, edit. yeah, because we had a W, a T, and an F in the booth, and they had them all close together, and <laughs> yeah, so it, yeah, it caused a bit of a commotion, but it was it was funny in the end. But it was hilarious. So I think it's hilarious because somebody took offense to it. Oh well, they didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We three friends. What's so? We three friends. You knew exactly what it was gonna do. Uh, well, probably. <laughs> but we, I don't know our brains didn't work that way. So yes, it did. So there we go. I'm just dry brushing that highlight onto each of the carrots, and I'm keeping it either you know just left of center, and I'm just using a little bit of warm white. How about drawing a winner? I, that, that would be a good idea. That sounds like an awesome idea. Let's do that. So we were having too much fun. That was Linda. Yakin. Linda Sofranco. Linda is one of our moderators on here. Um, whoop, what did I do? We still have? We still have. Okay. Did you almost shut us off? Yeah, well, I got to switch scenes <laughs> here. I'm just putting in a dry brush of uh, warm white. Yep. And I'm doing that to all of the carrots. And in the meantime, I got to put a screen capture on here <laughs> so you can see what's going on. There we go. Do do. Let's spin for a name. We got 176 names in there today. Nice. Yeah, that wheel looks pretty crowded. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see who gets a Tombow set of markers. Pencils. Pencils. The markers are for. <laughs> Joyce! Goitiras? Gutierrez. Gutierrez. There you go. Set of Tombow markers for Joyce. Pencils. Tombow pencils. Pencil. Why do I have markers? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joyce oh. Gutierrez. Joyce Gutierrez. Okay. Uh, you have a Sharpie. I am not putting it on the packaging. Just in case we don't get an address. That's true. So, Joyce, um, go to the front page on my website, click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner on the home screen, or on the home page, and uh, send us a message with your shipping information so that we can get that out to you on Monday. Um, just a note on that, if you are a winner and you don't send us your shipping information, um, we do have a look through the server to see if you're there, but if we can't find you on the on the server, uh, then we have no idea to, who to ship it to. So uh, make sure that you click on that little speech bubble on the home page if your name is called, and you'll see it on the screen. If your name is called and you are a winner, let us know so that we can ship it to you. Otherwise, we hold them for two weeks. If we don't get a, any shipping information and nobody contacts us in regards to it, it goes back in the pile and we'll go to somebody else at another date. So goes back make sure you send us your shipping information. Okay. And look, look, I don't remove you. I click the close. Yep. <laughs> I don't take you off the list. That means you can win more than once. <laughs> you can win more than once. And we've had it happen a couple of times. Yep. Uh, let's do a set of microns. Yep, we'll do a set of microns and then... Back to painting. Back to painting. And who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? Who's this person? Who is it? <laughs> Debbie McKellen. Debbie McClellan. 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 <laughs> There's a lot of L's in there. Yep, McClellan. <laughs> Debbie. McClellan. McClellan. Yep. M C Big C L A L L E N. Yeah, B. There we go. <laughs> All right, close and go back here. Oh my goodness! How do I manage to get paint all over myself? I don't know. All right, back to painting. <laughs> so. I've got um, a little bit of antique green. We're going to work on these leaves up here. 
I'm going to start with the ones that are furthest away. And again, I am not being too careful about these leaves we, because they're going to be fairly indistinct anyway. So I'm just stroking a little antique green. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. Because hey. perfect is boring. No, you don't have to be a member to be on the wheel. No, not at all. Everybody that is in that chat, if you have hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, or commented in the chat, your name goes into that wheel. And we go by username, so you have to actually provide us with your real name Yeah. when you uh, send us your information. Yeah. So. I spent a couple hours looking for somebody <laughs> one day because they uh, don't have their real name on their um, YouTube channel, which is fine. Yeah. I am completely down with that. Um, but it also makes it very hard for us to search the uh, server for your name and your shipping information. So um, that's why we ask you to contact us through the website. Click on that little speech bubble so that we can... Uh, Linda Franco's got a good question. Ooh. What is a orangey red you can use if you don't have naphthol red in Americana? If you don't have that, a good orangey red would be scarlet. Scarlet. There we go. Your back was turned to the microphone so they couldn't Scarlet. Hear you. Scarlet. <laughs> <laughs> so I like this this technique. It's very loose. As you can see, I am not worried about the perfection of it. Tracy, I can hardly remember my own name. <laughs> okay. I'm with you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the day. Why is our stream status poor? I don't know. <laughs> seems to be the Facebook one is nice and clear today and doesn't appear to be YouTube any issues. YouTube doesn't want to play nice today. I don't know why. There's lots of, uh... <laughs> yeah. Like everybody's is like, the the actual chat is not scrolling. I'm actually having to physically scroll through it yeah. on Facebook. <laughs> but okay, so I have leaves base coated in. As you can see, they are not perfect. They are not pretty. That's okay. This is mixed media. Just got an emergency alert on my phone for a snow squall alert. Oh, Ooh, fun. Have fun with that. Enjoy. We don't often get snow squalls here. Um, but when we do, they're usually dillies. So I'm going to draw this real quick, and then we're going to add a little bit of shading to these leaves. Um, again, it's going to be very loose. <laughs> Not going to worry too much about getting it perfect. Is there a chance this will become a series? It might. One never knows. <laughs> it might. So we did uh, carrots. Carrots. What would be next? What would be a... Um... Celery. <laughs> <laughs> Celery. <laughs> no. Um, you know what? Tomatoes? Tomatoes. Apples? <gasps> potato. A potato. Now that would be in interesting. <laughs> Just different types of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it would be fun, eh? you know. It'd be kind of fun to do a, an aubergine. An aubergine. Okay, so we're going to add a little shading. <laughs> Fairy eggplant. Eggplant. Yeah. Aubergine. aubergine. <laughs> Radishes. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Radishes. Radishes would be fun. Beets. Beets. Wouldn't that make a cute series? Peppers. Peppers. Chili peppers, hot peppers, green peppers, sweet peppers. peppers. Vegetables, Linda. <laughs> Vegetables. Easter chicks. Oh, <laughs> Easter chicks. Easter chicks. Little chicks. Little chicks. Well, oh, yeah. Little fluff balls. Little fluff balls. <laughs> Still edible. <laughs> Come on. It's just wrong. Onions. Oh, onions would be pretty. Because you could do red onions or green. You could do red, <gasps> green, white, white, Spanish yellows. Yep. Yeah. 
So I'm taking a little bit of plantation pine. Apple. And I'm just putting a little float at the base of the leaf. Just like that. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. Okay, so a lot of people are saying, yeah, they want to see Easter chicks. Easter chicks. <laughs> you have three three of them? Bright yellow, fresh out little, of the egg, and then one that is... Little peepers. You get the little, little, little white caps over there. They have those... Those, um, I don't know what, you can't really call them candy, I guess. Those peeps. <laughs> Jessica nearly choked on my nachos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have nachos? I like nachos. <laughs> First the whoopie pies, now the nachos. <laughs> Making me hungry. So I'm just putting a float of that plantation pine at the base of the leaf. And separating a couple. But again, it's not, I am not being neat and tidy about this. I am not being overly accurate. It's just to define those leaves a little bit. That's all it is. Uh, plantation pine is an Americana paint, yes. Yes. If you're using the fluid acrylic, you can use sap green. Yeah. And again not really worrying too much about the accuracy or I don't know with homemade salsa so it's just this is just a fun way to get that overlap I like the the fact that these leaves overlap each other oh well, there's two good suggestions what's that uh, for this style avocados oh yeah that'd be fun yeah and garlic mm. I like garlic. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Wish I could go upstairs and grab that tub of garlic that you have. Yeah. Minced garlic. I, I buy it by the bucket. I love garlic. I use garlic all the time. Mm. And fresh garlic, getting really good fresh garlic, especially right now, is really hard. So I like the Carrots meat. and asparagus, Easter season veggies. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. So I have my leaves in. So now we're going to start putting in um, a little bit of the line work. We're going to do some stems and whatnot. I'm going to break out my Dynasty Micron liner. Dun, 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 dun. And um, I have a little bit of um, matcha green or olive green or margarita. Any nice light green will do the trick for this. And we need to start putting in some stems. So I'm going to start connecting all of these leaves to the carrots with a little of that thinned green. Yes, you can overlap. Does not have to be perfect. Um, oops, I messed that up. I canned eight gallons of salsa. Gallons? <laughs> gallons. She's a gardener. That wouldn't surprise me. Eight gallons of salsa. Wow. So I'm just very lightly stroking in some of the stems for these leaves. I'll bring the chips. <laughs> How about some cupcakes? You've done cupcakes before. Yeah. You, you did them in the tattoo style, though. Yes. Yeah. So I'm using just a little bit of that, that lighter green to stroke in some stems. I am not being too specific. They don't have to connect. It doesn't matter. So it's just very lightly stroked in. And I'm going to take some of the plantation pine on the liner brush and do the same thing. Because we need to have some darker stems in there. And again, doesn't have to really connect to anything. My grandson eats that in a month. <laughs> I believe it. He's got to be what, like 15, 16 years old? It's a food group. 
Salsa is a food group to a 15, 16 year old. And, and a, it would have to be gallons. <laughs> okay. Age. So I've got all my little stems stroked in. This part is fun. Garlic and tomatoes? Mm. I'm a happy camper when there's garlic involved. If you ever want to make sure that you have taste buds, yep. you take a little bit of olive oil, you take some roasted garlic, mm. you mix it up in a little dish, mm. you take a nice bowl of coarse salt, you slice the tomato in half, you dip it in the olive oil, then dip it in the salt, and you take a big bite. <laughs> now I'll let you know if you've got taste buds. Taste buds, because that is delicious. First time I did that, I was very skeptical, but it was tasty. Just okay. roasted garlic, now olive oil. I can't find my uniball. My... Right in front of you. I dent a pen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you had yes, it. I did. You did it over here. Oh. You had one in the packaging. Yeah, right but there. I'm not going to open that one oh, if okay. I have one already open. Gotcha. So this is the fun part. Um, this is where you get to do a little bit of sketchy stuff. I like going around my <laughs> my carrots like so. This is just a sketchy little line. Imperfect. It's not solid. Not tracing like a hard line around everything. I like this line to be rough. Imperfect. <laughs> yes, roasted garlic on its own is yummy. Oh, I can just smear that on toast. Oh, yum. Take a, a bulb of garlic, an entire bulb, mm -hmm. cut the top off. Slice it in half. Slice it in half. Drizzle it with olive oil. Drizzle. Sprinkle it with sea salt. Wrap it in tinfoil. Put Throw it, it in the oven. Mm -hmm. Let it roast up till it starts to stink. <laughs> <laughs> Unwrap. And then squeeze out all the goodies. Yep. Add a little butter. Mix, 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 mix. Caramelized. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm just using that... Um... Pickled garlic. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, by the way, there's a brand new I jar. Know. Okay. <laughs> I saw. Okay. Just make a jar. I drooled. Yep. I just put a brand new jar of stuffed manzanilla olives. Mm -hmm. Garlic stuffed manzanilla olives in the... So I'm using that same um, identipen. <gasps> it took her a second. I <laughs> Did you read it? I had to read it. Oh, <laughs> my God. I have a mental block when it comes to this pen. I, I have no... It something else. I, I should. It's kind of like the... Fugly brush. I could never remember that it was a Dynasty encaustic one inch oval. I just called it my fugly Yet brush. Yeah, you have no problem calling it that now. Nope. But it took what? Four years? <laughs> so now I'm going to use that same pen and I'm going to trace my leaves. Peaches. Just like that. Peaches would work in this. Yeah. You can have fun with this. This is the fun part about this type of mixed media is there aren't really any rules you can do whatever you want i like that this you know using this identi pen aren't you proud of me you got it right that time call it the forget me pen yeah my forget me pen i'll call it something else altogether it's the only way i'll remember what it is just call it the id pen id pen that's a good idea <laughs> might work what are your top 10 media acrylic pink colors that you like to use? Super easy. <laughs> <laughs> green gold, sap green, cobalt teal hue, Prussian blue, primary magenta, uh, diarylide yellow, um, dioxazine purple. Um, I love the metallic gold and the metallic silver. That, if you're going to get those two... And uh, quinacridone magenta. 
or quinacridone gold. There you go. Those are my top 10. Those are your top 10 slash 11. Yeah. Because I'm really, I really love the quinacridone magenta, but I really love the quinacridone gold too. Did you use white on the original pattern? Oh, we haven't gotten there yet. Oh, not yet. <laughs> We're going to do that too. So I got black. And like I said, I'm just loosely outlining these leaves. I am not worried about getting them perfect. Uh, the pen is both fine and ultra fine. Yeah, it has a dual end. There's two tips on this one. I like using the, the really fine one. So then out comes my Uniball Signo. This is a white opaque ink gel pen. I love this pen. And again, we're going to sketch around our carrots. And I don't worry about being, again, perfect. If it overlaps the paper, that's okay. I, I kind of like that it's indistinct and imperfect. And it... You don't need to press hard, just let it roll across the surface. <laughs> if it skips, that's okay too. Let the pen do its thing. Let the pen do its thing. So it may skip, it may not. If it does, oh well. If it doesn't, that's okay too. But I kind of like this, the irregularity of this. I don't want this to be a f solid, perfect line. I kind of like the idea that it's not. And I'm going to do the same thing to the leaves. So it's going to skip around over top of that black line. It'll outline it. We do typically sell the white pen. Mm -hmm. We're out of stock, though. Are we really? Yeah, we have none. Okay. Well, didn't realize that, or I would have ordered some. You may have to order some. It, they I are may? available on the website. Yep. Uh, we're just out of stock right now. Yeah. I will get some in. They they don't take long to come in. No. But I love how this white works over top of this. I just, I think it's a really... It's a fun way to enhance something. And that white works with this. I love the fact that this white opaque, it's a very bright white. It is a Japanese ink. Uh, I believe she has a pattern for chili peppers. I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's called hot sauce. Let's go check it out. What is the Identa pen? This one here. This is an Identa pen. It is a permanent indelible marker it is a sakura ink so it's water-based but it is permanent and indelible i love this um i do have some of these in stock yeah they're on the website yeah and the white um but i think i think sandy mcteer has the white gel pen as well on her website yeah, so i think so too yeah how about the glue with the gold foil would it be too thick Ooh, that would be cool. But I'll tell you something. Uh, get yourself a fine tip writer. Yeah. You could do, um, do it with gold paint. But yeah, with the foil, I think that would be cool too. So there we go. I, I really like how this white, it really sort of makes out all of the design elements of this really pop. Uh. Do you have the Black Factus eraser? I do not at the moment, um, but I believe that Sandy McTeer does. She may have some in stock right now. If not, I think you can get them all over Amazon. Yeah, they're available anywhere. You can even find them at Michael's. Most art supply stores will have them. They're a general pencil product. Um, I know Hobby Lobby stocks them, and I know that Joanne's Fabric stocks them. So... There's only a few other little details that you're going to add to these carrots. Now, carrots have to have those little lines. I use my black gel pen to pop a few of those little lines, those little eyes, as we call them. Ah, uh, yes. The hot sauce pattern was actually the first pattern the members did. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to add a few little stitches to my dots. I know this is going to sound silly, but it's just a couple of little lines on the dots on the 
orange one. I just like the texture it creates. And then we have completed our carrots. So the only thing we have left to do is our lettering. I'm going to dry this really well. Make Are you sure just that... doing white lettering? I'm just doing basic white lettering. Yeah. Um, Contrast to that green quite well. Yep. I just want to make sure it's the ink is really dry before I... <laughs> My Michaels or and Hobby Lobby, neither one had them, and when I asked for them, it was deer in the headlights look. That you get that a lot, actually. Um, a lot of stores, even Michael's stores and whatnot. The only place you don't get that blank look is usually in a fine art shop. Yeah. yeah. Because the people that work in there know their product inside out and backwards. So. Okay, so we are nice and dry. I really like it that I've dropped it down here. I think that's a fun. Um, means of doing this. Now I'm going to pull my lettering up to the top. You could still put the lettering down at the bottom, but I wanted to just reverse this a little bit. So I'm going to position this so that my lettering is on there and I'll tape it in place. And then out comes the McGraffite pepper. Oh, D. Gatz says I get them at Staples. Really? Our Staples doesn't carry them. No. And now it would be fun. You could change this up. I've used Happy Easter, but you could use the word carrot at the top. If you don't want to use this as a holiday sign and just, you know, make a funky kitchen sign, I think it'd be awesome. Um, so you don't have to uh, use this lettering. You could put whatever you wanted up there. So, but I am going to trace my lettering. What is going on? I just got like 200 comments. Oh. <laughs> I've never seen it scroll that quick. It was all Facebook comments too. Oh, probably just loading. So I'm going to quickly trace this lettering on and then we'll show you how to paint that. We're going to use warm white and a number two rigger to put this lettering on. Does anyone else hate spell check as much as me? Spell check or autocorrect? Yeah, autocorrect or spell check. <laughs> autocorrect drives me insane. Yeah, it turns all my strong worded sentences into cute and cuddly ducks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was my thought for the day one day. The man that invented autocorrect yeah. should roast in hello. <laughs> <laughs> Autocorrect needs to go for sure. I. It's handy. It um, is handy. If you've had a recent update on any kind of Apple product, <laughs> I um, was having a lot of trouble with um, messages. I'd go to type something and it would just, the weirdest words were being replaced. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out like, what the heck is going on? And uh, the most recent update had... Uh, predictive text oh, automated yeah. so i hate predictive text i i had to go in and physically disable it because it was driving me insane i text somebody something and i get a completely different sentence than what i had intended and it was just this predictive text thing so i just oh my gosh get rid of that it was driving me crazy Yes, but... Oops. There we go. So this will just take a minute to do this. <laughs> yes, Robin, but we wouldn't be able to laugh at words like sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I found out about identipens from the Mary Owens pen and ink class. Now, you want to talk about ink. <laughs> My hot sauce went to hot sausage. Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> I had to laugh the other day. I was reading a digital book. Yeah. 
And um, every time I was trying to figure out, like, why would somebody many them? Every time I would see the word many, I would have to go back and read the whole sentence again to understand what the word many fit in, how it fit in there. And at some point, somebody's digital software switched the word Mary to many. So, because they were discussing the upcoming marriage of somebody and um, to many them. whenever the word Mary was supposed to be there, it changed it to many. And I thought, okay, some editor is obviously Not. allowing autocorrect to do a lot of their work for them. <laughs> Fat fingers and small keywords don't go together. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that is a fact. Okay, I think... I think, I think, I think. I have it all on there. Yep. So first things first, I need to put some shading behind this lettering so that um, it stands out on that surface. I have to adjust the camera. So I'm going to do that with a little bit of a schwaltem. I know you're shocked by that. Mm. And, and it is going to be hard to see. Um, gang I know that because of all of these leaves so I will um, I'm going to quickly do this first and then I will do it on the the one up top so that you can see what I'm doing but I still need to get this one done so ooh, and I'm on this white ink with this so it's um I may have to touch up a few things here because I'm on white ink. So I'm just going to quickly do this. Oop. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm starting to freak out. Is the camera freaking out? Okay. Okay, so we're going to... I'm going to come up to the top here. On the right side of each of the letters with the darkest value towards the letter and on the background, you're going to put a float of asphaltum. Clumsa. And this is going to give this lettering a little bit of dimension. It's going to raise it up off of the surface so that it becomes very, very visible. Yeah, strobe effect with the camera. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's something I can, the only way I can control it is not touch it. Yeah. So he was trying to arrange it so that you could see better. Yeah. So that shadow and on the inside curve, that shadow will give you a little more definition so that when I paint this lettering in, that lettering is going to stand up really nicely. And so I just have the H left to do. Mm -hmm. So inside of that curve, on the outside of that one, and this is just going to, as I said, lift that lettering off the surface. And it's just a float of asphaltum. You can't blame the cat this time. No, she's upstairs. We kicked her out. Yeah, we have to kick her out of the studio. She's such a best when she wants to be. Okay, so I have all my, my lettering shaded. And I'm going to use a number two rigger for this. Those of you that don't know what a rigger is, this is a rigger. Looks like a liner, but it isn't one. This one will um, create a chisel edge, much like a flat brush. Stupid spell check. <laughs> yeah. Write stupid with two O's and see what happens. <laughs> It'll accept it. <laughs> predictive text drove me insane. I hate predictive text. So... Here is our lettering. I'm going to use a number two rigger for this. Well loaded with thinned white, warm white. We do not need this to be perfectly opaque. So don't beat yourself up if it's not. Okay. So you can tap that brush so it creates a chisel edge. Like so. Ooh, what's next week's class? Um, next week we are painting uh, tulips. Little tulips and butterflies. 
Another floral. Another floral. Can't touch this. It's um, it's going to be a little sign that you can hang on your front door. A lot of people hang wreaths with whatnot on their front door, and this is just a giant tag that's going to fit on one of those wreaths. Or you could hang it there all by its lonesome if you want to. But yep, we're doing little purple tulips. Pattern will be up this week. Early for a change. YouTube slowed down. Why did you not stencil those dots? What dots? These dots? Yeah. They're stenciled. They're stenciled. I just used the stencil to create the circle because um, I wanted them black. And if I stenciled with black paint, it would have buried the text. And I wanted the text to show up. So I traced it in and then applied a wash of black. Tag size? The tag size is... Uh, can you measure that for me? <laughs> I think it's a 6 by 10. I think. It's this size. Renee's going to measure it real quick. <laughs> yeah, 6 by 10. Yeah, it's a 6 by 10. The finished one is not quite ready. I'm still painting it. She was painting it right up until like the 3 minute mark before we went live. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Then a, there's actually a series I love purples. of signs in that pattern. We're going to paint the tulip, but there's actually a series. Purple hearts. Grapes. Sweet peas. When are we going to be doing the sweet peas? That will be soon. I just noticed you had a skeleton key. You just noticed that? Yeah. Sheila sent me that. <laughs> that? Sheila made that for me. Sheila made that? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I just noticed it hanging there. Yeah. You're making me hungry. Go get something to eat. So I'm just stroking in this lettering. And I will more than likely come back in and enhance this lettering. Might make it a little more bright. So the lettering is really this simple. Load the brush up full of thinned warm white. Press down until the brush opens up and fills the space. Release the pressure and bring the brush back up onto the chisel edge. What can you use if no plantation pine? Sap green, black green, a nice dark green. That's all nice you dark, need. Nice dark green. What's with the laughy face? Why are you laughing? Oh. <laughs> You're making me hungry. Yeah, go eat something. You should always eat. If you're hungry, eat. Though sometimes you may be thinking you're hungry when you're actually thirsty. Yeah. Drink water. Or tea. Yep. Or in my case, coffee. I drink tea all day. I can't stand tea. What would be something I could do, could letter on this so I could keep it out? all the time oh that would be easy i would do something like carrots just use the word carrots carrots or welcome yeah put it in your carrot bin as a like a label um gonna have new video up this week too oh no that's the first sorry first first of march first of march yeah there'll be new video up and um there'll be a new little freebie coming up too Dun, dun, dun. That you're going to love. 
But she's also got to find time to play with her pencils. I need to find time to play with my pencils. Oh, how did that class go? I didn't. I missed it. You missed it. Por qué? Yeah. Because I wasn't paying attention. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I missed it. That's okay. Uh, it's recorded so I can go back and watch it. I did the bunny from last week It colored in colored pencils. Nice. I just have to finish the background on it, and then I'm going to try it in some different themes other than Easter. Just make sure you post that on my Facebook page because yeah. we really want to see that, and we want to get you entered in that drawing yeah. for those amazing markers, those Tombow markers. That's what it is. Tombow markers for the challenge, not for... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got to put this sticky note... That would be helpful. Um, Debbie's so prize. there is our lettering. Now the fun part about this lettering is I'm going to dry it real quick because it's not. Oh, I just realized I missed a spot. Hello. I'm going to take a little bit of thin, warm white. I'll dry that. Anyone know how Mark Menendez is doing? I haven't heard. Hmm. Haven't heard. I know his family had asked her some privacy, which is, you know, absolutely fine. So the last I heard, he was doing well. So. Okay. So I'm going to make sure this lettering is nice and dry. And we're going to um, highlight this lettering a little bit. I'm going to do that with our... Um, Identipen. Jeez. No, it was me. It was me. It was the prizes. I kept thinking that there was Tombow markers in these prizes, but it's Tombow pencils. The yeah. Tombow markers are for the bunny challenge. Yeah. That's where I was getting messed up. So I'm putting a line of black on the same side as that float of Eshvaltum with our identi pen and again i am not worried about um, whether or not this is perfect because it doesn't matter it's just to help lift this off the surface a little bit <laughs> poor robin storm her ocd kicked in oh Lost your tea <laughs> i did it's right they, there they can't see it i know <laughs> it's crossed it's crossed Cross your tea. <laughs> Poor Robin. I'm glad her shoulder's feeling better and she's back to painting. Yay! <laughs> your tea is not crossed. It's crossed! It is. You just can't see it. <laughs> I did, however, just spot something that I need to fix. Uh oh. Because this, it will, like Robin, it will drive me absolutely out of my mind and i missed it on both of them uh, so i need to fix that Ooh, is the membership class on the 22nd tuesday or the tw monday the 28th the 22nd so this upcoming tuesday this upcoming tuesday so for the members out there, get your watercolors ready. It's going to be fun. Yep, it is going to be fun. Okay, there was two little lines here that I forgot to put in. The rest of the P. <laughs> so I'm just using that. I keep wanting to call this a uniball. Identipen. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. This video ran my battery down. I had to go get another device. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think we're just about there. Da, 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 da. Yep. We're about there. So I've got my lettering highlighted with that identi pen. I have no idea why I have such a hard time remembering the name of this pen, but. Identipen. Identipen. 
Identipin. Identipin. I'm going to have to look, repeat that a bazillion times before I first. Okay. <laughs> so we have our lettering all done. I'm going to dry this real quick. And then uh, we're going to spatter this with first with white, with warm white. And then again with a little bit of thinned lamp black. And for that, I need my fugly brush. And I am going to adjust the camera again. So thinned warm white. You can be as aggressive with this as you want. It's entirely up to you. If you like lots of white spatter, go for it. If you like less, then dial it back a little bit. The camera's freaking out again. Yeah. There we go. And then I'm going to use a little bit of thinned lamp black. And I'm going to spatter yet again. I like the black. I'm a, a like little bit of black on here. Spatter, spatter, spatter. I do like my spatter. I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we'll talk about finishing the edges. Yeah. But, yeah, it's freaking out. It's flipped out and flipped over. <laughs> it's still freaking out. You'll figure it out. So I'm going to dry this real quick so that I'm not smearing black dots and spatters and... It's fixed. Okay. <laughs> There's a delay. So to finish the edges on this piece, this is what I like. I like taking, I've just thinned out some lamp black and I'm going to paint my edges black. Like I said, camera glitches out when I try to move it, but I have to adjust it. So yeah, there's no, no other way to do it. No other way to do it. It's the, there's a sensor in that camera and it doesn't like being messed it, with. <laughs> it, it basically prevents the picture from being flipped upside down. Yeah. Um, the way we have it set up is <laughs> it's parallel to the, the table, so it doesn't know whether it's up or down. Yeah. So it, the sensor's just con confused. So I'm using just thinned lamp black to base the edges of my surface. I like the thinned black because this has got a wood frame and I just, I like how it looks that I can still see some of the wood grain. That's just a personal choice. And because it's thinned, I can get it to go into those, the texture of that plywood that's on the top. And I like how it, the black on the edges, it just frames this up really nicely. We're almost there. Almost looks like a dark stain. Yeah, it yeah. does. It looks almost like a dark stain. And I kind of like that look, especially for how we're going to finish the front of this. So I have all of that black along the edges. <laughs> Brenda Owen, I'm a lot like that sensor. Yep. Often I don't, do not know if I'm up or down. <laughs> well, I don't know which end is up. So I'm going to dry this real quick just so that it's easier to handle for this next stage and this last stage. I'm thinking radishes would be fun. <laughs> now I've got it in my head, i got to do radishes. If you want to do it, <laughs> they're not going to complain. But yeah, I could see this. This would be such a cute series for a kitchen. Uh, you could do carrots and then radishes and then, you know, whatever. Green onions, shallots. It would just be fun. Jessica oh. Gillerin, Mother Hubbard. <gasps> I just traced an entire pattern onto wood with graphite paper upside down. Yeah, I've done that. I have done that. It happens. Yep. So, stamp head. Stamp head. Stays on stays on stamp pad we're going to rub the edges corners and the front of this so i put stamp pad so that it is at an angle on my surface so if you want a narrow line 
just rub like so. If you want more, lean it towards the surface a bit more so that you get more ink, more pad touches the front of the surface. It'll give you a nice aged edge. So if I lean it on, I can get a wider look like that. <laughs> Same with the corners. See that you can get a nice finished corner. Look at that. I like that kind of aged edge. And I like it doing it with stamp pad because it kind of comes off as of being there for a long time. Yes, the T is crossed. The T is crossed. <laughs> <laughs> you really just are. can't see it. It's it's lost in the in the white of the, the in leaves. the white of the leaves. But yeah. yes, it is crossed. The T is crossed. It's just not as <laughs> prominent. So I like this aged look that I can do that with a stamp pad. That I can come in as much as I want or as little as I want, and it gives this a nice finished look. Comme ça. Now, if you don't have a stamp pad to do this, you can do this with a brush and a little bit of thinned lamp black. It's the roly-poly method. Yeah, and just use the roly method. Um, I use it on barn wood quite a bit. And it's just this simple. You take a round brush and a little bit of thinned lamp black, and you just roll it along the edge of the canvas or the surface like so. And it gives you a nice broken look chipped paint look like a chipped paint look so if you wanted to accentuate that you can certainly do that with a little bit of thinned lamp black yeah, boom and boom and that did we draw the last of our no we still two? got two more okay and i gotta switch cameras you do have to switch cameras and, and then you have to put everything oh everybody's in there okay well then you better start spinning that wheel okay i gotta get the wheel up <laughs> give me a second Badoom. There's the wheel. I got the wheel. <laughs> so this is a really fun and easy piece. I, As I said, I can see doing uh, radishes and a few other things. I just think it'd be a fun, fun concept. Um, and, and now you've got my juices going. So now I have to go and radishes. create some radishes. I think this would be fun to redo mm. this and then do like a kitchen theme. I really like that idea. I really like that idea. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And here we go. And he's spinning the wheel again. Who do we got? Who do we got? Who is it? <laughs> this was fun. I enjoyed this. No. Who was it? She's a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? She doesn't have any Tombow pencils. No? No. All right. We'll send them. So it. Deb Antonick is our winner this week <laughs> for the Tombow pencils. I know she doesn't have any. I know she has Dynasty Micron, so I'm not sending her those. We're not sending you brushes. We're not sending you brushes, but I am going to make sure you get your uh, Tombow pencil set. <laughs> That's funny. All right. We're sending you colored pencils. Yeah. She's get, they're not colored pencils. They're pencils, drawing pencils. Oh, so like <laughs> what? They're drawing pencils, a set of drawing pencils. Stay with the tour. Oh, like lead. Yeah. Not wax. No, they're not lead. They're graphite. Graphite. <laughs> <laughs> and that means we've got one more to draw. Yeah. Who's getting the dynasty set microns? Of dynasty microns. Bing. All right, Deb, we're sending you those. I, I was kidding. You weren't cheating. <laughs> it's just, you're in there. Stormy Hyde? Hyde? Stormy Hyde. Hyde? Hyde. I know I'm saying that wrong. Hyde. <laughs> I got to write it down. Anyway, Stormy, um, Deb, I know where you're at mailing address. I would hope um, so. <laughs> uh, but Stormy, make sure you go to the front page of my website at tracymoreau.net. On the homepage down in the lower right-hand corner is a little speech bubble. Click on that, send us your shipping information, and we will get your Dynasty Micron brushes out to you. I have awesome, awesome, awesome. We have four Tombow pencil sets to give away next week. So um, make sure that you join us next week. We're going to be painting some tulips. Tulips? Yep. 
we're painting tulips nice little purple tulips are gonna be a fun piece to do super easy um i've got a, a, it's just a pretty little design and you're gonna have some fun with it it'll make a nice little happy spring welcome uh, for your front door or forever however you want to use it we've got some easy techniques um, we decided to go back to basics to some really simple techniques and create something very pretty and very elegant <laughs> and easy to do how does your name show up that many times i have no idea because she shows up and she comments and she <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea I'm the wheel is the, the wheel moderators out <laughs> But that's not fair to them. No. It, it really isn't. It isn't. No. So, so um, that is it for us today. We've got, uh, we've had a lot of fun. Thanks. Why? Many, many thanks to those of you yeah. who um, who sent us some donations on the Super Chat. That, yeah. $41.99. Uh, nice. So we're going to send off that $41.99 <laughs> to our local SPCA animal shelter. Thank you so much for helping us feed the puppers and the kitties. And we do appreciate that. And uh, thanks so much for joining us every Saturday as you do. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do that. Just click on that big old red subscribe button and hit the uh, bell notification so that you're notified whenever we have new video posted on the channel. And join us here every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time for our uh, free live class. We have a lot of fun. Uh, we will be posting the pattern on the website for next Saturday's class, probably tomorrow or Monday. And uh, thanks so much for joining us as you do every week. We really do appreciate it. And if you are not a member of the Tracy Morrow Paid Membership Group, please think about it. We'd love to have you. And uh, to my members, it's a love cult. you guys. I'm so, so excited <laughs> about Tuesday. We're going to have so much fun playing in watercolors and acrylics and pens. And we're just going to have a blast. Yeah. Okay, guys, that is it for both of us. Thanks for joining us. And mwah, we love you. Please stay safe. Good vibes. <laughs> All right, now how did I shut this up? I don't know. No. You've got control of that now. It's me. a cult, you know that. I know. <laughs> Coolest delicious. Not <laughs>